www.voiceofafricaradio.com. You're locked into the biggest, you're locked into the best. And let me just give you an insight into the topic for today. It's a continuation of a program we had a couple of weeks ago because due to popular demand, we've been asked to do a part two. And the topic is, are ancient African traditions and customs incompatible with modern religions? Are ancient African traditions and customs incompatible with modern religions? And I think many of our listeners would have been following the uh, election of a new pope, um, which had a religious aspect to it. And basically we want to know uh, how, 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 whether uh, African traditions and customs can actually sit side by side with modern religions. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear what our guests, um, Darren Henry, who's a journalist, who will be joining us pretty soon, and Her Royal Highness, will be, will be asking them what they actually think. They've got lots to tell us about. They've got lots of insights, lots of bits and pieces which they can educate us on. So basically, we can, we can, we can, we can have a good discussion as to whether African traditions and customs can sit side by side with modern world religions because there's always been issues with African traditions and customs, the problem of libation, puberty rights, uh, festivals, this, that and the other and it almost seems as if African traditions and customs cannot sit side by side with religion. Other people say, hey, African traditions and customs can actually sit side by side because a long time ago Modern religions such as such as Christianity never did the drumming, the dancing, the clapping, the loudness. But it's all kind of being fused in these days. And we'll be asking our guests whether it's it's actually possible for for African traditions and customs to sit side by side with modern religions. So basically, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be sizzling. It's going to be hot. Wherever you are, in your bath, in your balcony, on the tube, on the train, in your boyfriend's bed, in your girlfriend's bed, uh, in your parents' kitchen, keep it locked. You're locked into the biggest, you're locked into the best. It's Trade Talk, Sunday, 17th March, 2013. And can I say as well, yes. um, I, I'd like to say my respect. I'm very uh, privileged to be in the presence of royalty. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, we must respect our African ancestors, our African royalty, and I'm very privileged to be uh, sitting here with Her Royal Highness, yeah, I was given um, two African names, all right, I was given one by uh, King of Padagri in Yoruba, um, Nigeria, yes. okay, which was Tadagbe, mm -hmm. okay, and another one I was given um, as part of uh, an Egyptian spiritual order, which was called Dua Mutef, so people who um, know or have heard of Dua Mutef, because I used to do a radio program on... Um, Deja Vu and Supreme, mm -hmm. that's me, yeah, I'm just letting you know, I'm just being real, my character, um, giving you what my mother called me, which yeah. is Darren Henry, because we have made <laughs> our own imprint as that, but I just wanted to say, very privileged to be in the presence of our African royalty. Fantastic, yeah. 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 let me come back to Her Royal Highness, could you shed a little bit of light into your traditional is it, uh, role and, and stuff, because listeners would want to know What's this Royal Highness about, and mm. which parts of Africa does she? You know, give us give us the, 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 a little a little brief on your. Okay, to comment on what Darren said, I, believe it or not, uh, I have a name, uh, Pauline. Really? Which uh, yes, <laughs> when I was uh, in school, they insisted on calling me Pauline and Pauline Kojo. So most people know me as that. However, um, I'm from Ghana. And uh, the way royalty works in Ghana is there are ruling houses, and those ruling houses uh, determine whether you can be a royal of a particular stool. Now, I like to illustrate it in the way that uh, the structure of, of, of UK uh, decentralization structure works. So you have, for instance, you have London, and then you have the boroughs, and then underneath the boroughs are towns. It's, this, it's very, very similar. So you have the region, which is, in my case, the greater Accra region, and there is a king, mm -hmm. and there's a, a, a queen. They're not married. The queen comes from a particular royal house, and so does the king. And then underneath that, you have the second tier, which are divisional queen mother, uh, chiefs and queen mothers. I fall in that category. 
this is where the paramountcies come in. So you have the divisions. And uh, within that structure, again, divisional queen, chiefs and queen mothers, although your stool is in a particular area, by virtue of being a divisional queen or chief, you have jurisdiction over a larger geographical area, sometimes up to, up to 50 or more uh, towns and villages. My stool sits within a jurisdiction um, called Amomole, and what we know as the Jase Manye. Manye means queen. And the Jase means the kingmaker. So I'm queen of the kingmakers. Okay. So my seat is in a place called Amomole. Now, Amomole is in the Gar West section of Greater Accra. And as a result, I have a very unusual, uh, anomalic uh, role where my jurisdiction, uh, from an educational developmental point of view, sits within the Gar West area. But from a traditional point of view, I'm also, you know, Jamestown in Accra, yeah. you know, named after King James. Uh, we call it Nglishi. Nglishi in Ga means English because the, this is where the fort is, um, because by the seaside the fort was there. And the British were there. They lived in, in that part of, of uh, Accra. And so Nglishi is where my, my, my head comes from. Okay. And my role as a queen mother essentially is to... Uh, we have a new type of uh, queen mother um, chief coming up, and some of us are young. We have the privilege of education. And so I like the developmental, the forward thinking, the structural side of things rather than the purely traditional and, um, you know, a gracing occasions. Because sometimes all, most people assume that all that is required is to dress up in your regalia and sit at a function. Yeah. But no. So what, what we do, what I do here in the UK, you talked about uh, PPT rights, I run that sort of thing for young girls who when they hit, as soon as they hit their first ever period, I take them from parents and we go through this beautiful, very emotional tradition. Really? Yes, because we do. Like so anybody who wants themselves. their child to do this, I, I can promise it's so beautiful. And we also do educational programs for young people. I speak at various functions in Accra. I go from school to school, training them on um, career development. We talk about self-development. We find that a lot of the time within a culture, we're brought up to, uh, um, you know, you know, it, it almost not be heard. Yeah. You know, to be seen and not heard. Yeah. But then just to give the young people a voice to say that actually it's okay to be respectful, but there's a difference between that and not being able to speak out. Yeah. Uh, we run what we call skills-based learning initiatives. Again, I believe that not everyone is academic. Mm -hmm. So we have a structure in Ghana where if you're not academic and you don't become a doctor, lawyer, or have an office job, white collar job as they call it, you've failed. And I don't think that's right because there are people who are good. If you give them carpentry training, they will be the best carpenter. If you t teach someone to clean, they would probably be the best cleaner. So taking this God-given skills through an organization called Ten Talents Networks, taking the God-given skills they've been given, and then using that to teach them how to be successful and be comfortable, whether you're academic or not. Fantastic. It's www.voiceofafricaradio.com, Voice of Africa Radio, 94 FM on your dial. Don't you touch that dial because we've got the best guests in the house. And I've actually been told that Brother Lida Bandanka of the Al Kabulon Revivalist Movement is actually on his way. So it's going to be even more sizzling. We've got Her Royal Highness here. We've got Darren Henry, a journalist. And we'll be having Brother Lida Bandanka of the Al Kabulon Revivalist Movement. I'm going to kick off the show straight and come back to Her Royal Highness because for me it's interesting, being a Royal Highness, let me ask you this question. Do you think that African traditions and customs are incompatible with modern religions? Can they sit side by side or is it a no-no? Now, just give me a yes or no answer. No. No. <laughs> Simple, no. So African traditions and customs cannot sit side by side with modern world religions. Well, no, they can. I mean, they're not incompatible. They're not. You so know, they it, can sit side by absolutely. side. Absolutely. Why? Why do you say so? Well, first of all, we have to determine what the compatibility means. Mm -hmm. Has religion mm -hmm. changed? Why are we saying uh, 
are ancient African traditions That's compatible with yeah. modern mm-hmm. modern religion. I think if you look at it from the point of view of God as a, a as an entity, God never changed. He's never changed. God of Africa was there before uh, the missionaries arrived. Okay, so if you look at it from that point of view, then the question becomes a non-question because you're you're then saying that religion itself has changed. I think the propagation mm-hmm. of religion and co- tradition mm-hmm. has changed. What we're being taught is actually a distortion of everything that is true. You say what we are being taught. Yeah. Who is teaching us what? Religion. Okay. Religion. I have a big issue with what is happening now across religions. Now, you look at our traditions. Um, as a traditional leader, I do the coming of faith ceremonies. And you don't have to look far. Let's take the Bible, for instance. You have. And let's take, whilst we're on the subject, as Christians are usually the ones who propagate this idea. Let's take Christ. Mm-hmm. It tells you in the Bible that when he was 12, he went through his bar mitzvah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Do you, have you ever seen a bar mitzvah being done? It's ritualistic. A lot of what we do is a lot of the things that were happening at the time are based on our what we consider our traditional, core traditional religions. So, for instance, you have coming of age ceremony. And people are like, oh, but I'm a Christian. I don't want to have this thing done. Actually, I, if you are and I, you're a Christian, are you really reading your Bible? Another thing is, for the Christians, when they come up with, oh, you know, traditional religion is ancestral, we have ancestral worship. And I say, again, let's take Christ for the sake of argument. Now, there's something called the transfiguration in the Bible. Christ, from from what I read, he got raised up and he spoke to the spirits of Moses and Elijah. Now, if that is not ancestral communication, I don't know what is. Again, they're not reading their Bible. So when you ask the question, is tradition... Uh, compatible with modern day religion. I think modern day religion, what the problem is, is the people who are propagating it. They're distorting everything that is truth. Okay. Uh, now, Darren, let me, let me come to you. Similar type question. Can African traditional customs, culture sit side by side with modern world religions? Yes or no, and a brief as to your answer. Well, as you know, I came from the perspective of saying no. Yeah. And uh, um, our reasoning of, the, or sorry, as I say, the reason of Her Royal Highness is uh, a lot of it I do agree with, okay, in um, essence of our Christian brothers and sisters really not knowing what the Bible is actually saying in the languages that it was revealed in, first and mm. foremost, Semitic languages, because if we look at Matthew twenty-seven forty-six, we can say it says, Eli, Eli, Labathana, Sabathini, yeah? Mm. Now that was translated as, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me, which is first found in the Old Testament in Psalms 22, 1. Now that language that is being spoken by Yahshua, which would have been his name, it wouldn't, the name wouldn't have been Jesus, because there was Yeshua. no J in the, in the English language, just like the tribe of um Judah would have been Yahuda, mm-hmm. yeah, that would have been its tribe. And another um name or spin off of Yahshua is Yehoshua or mm-hmm. Joshua. Okay, so let's first and foremost get an understanding and comprehension of the language that we're speaking. The language there was Galilean Nabataean, yeah, which is a form of uh Arabic Syriac, mm-hmm. all right, which would now today be the region and the land called Palestine. Okay, Mm -hmm. make no mistake about it. The Yeshua or the Christ of your scriptures had an African education because in the book of Matthew. All right. It tells you quite categorically in Matthew chapter two that an angel of the most high, his father, our father who are in heaven, as it says in Matthew six, nine, came to his stepfather, Joseph and his mother, Mary, and said, take the child to Egypt. Now, Egypt runs all the way from North Africa Mm -hmm. right through down into Central Africa, into Sudan. Okay, Mm -hmm. And you'll find that most of your. Um, prophets, scribes of the Bible, whenever they were in trouble, the Most High Heavenly Father had a habit of sending them to Africa. Mm -hmm. Now the point with the Messiah or the Mashiach of your scriptures called Yeshua being sent to Africa is very pertinent and very poignant and sometimes our African brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters, they tend to overlook this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I often say to people, before you was born religious, Mm -hmm. you was born racial. What does that mean? There's three races on the planet. Negroid, 
Caucasoid and Mongoloid, or Negro and Mongoloid and Caucasoid, in that order, all right? Now, you was born into that race before somebody, your parents, placed a religious belief, be it Islam, Christianity, or Judaism, or Buddhism, or Hinduism, or Sikhism, before they place that belief upon you, That's okay? True. Yeah, so they're first and foremost, your loyalty is to your race, not to <laughs> your religion. Now, I've got to make that cat quite categorically clear. In the book of Genesis, the first nationality and nations mentioned are Havila and uh, Kish, yeah, Kish today would be Ethiopia. Havila is talking about Sudan, um, going right back up into North Africa. He's talking about ancient Egypt. Most people are not aware of this, okay? So when you look at um, the Bible, which is a historical book and a ge geographical book, when you look at it from this perspective, when you know the knowledge of this, then you will know that the Yeshua of your scriptures, for the first 13 years before he went through his bar mitzvah, he was educated, mm -hmm. raised in Egypt. Now, the scribe of the Bible, the scribe who wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, who was Moses, okay, in Acts 7.22, it says he was learned in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians. So, your major prophets of religion, monotheistic religion, i.e. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they had to go to Africa to learn the ancient African mysteries, which yes. was expounded upon by Her Royal Highness, where she gave you about the birthrights. And unfortunately, most of our Christians today are following the way of a Greco-Roman or Ju Judaic Greco-Roman by the name of Paul. If you analyze what Paul said when he, he said that he met in a vision, um, Yeshua on the road to Damas Damascus, and you examine what the Messiah Christos Christ was actually teaching, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll find that there's a big difference henceforth where Her Royal Highness was rightly saying it's the way that it's been distorted today to come from a Eurocentric Greco Roman perspective which turns our race away from their ancient ancestry or their ancestral lineage yeah mm. make no bones about it yeah your yeshua of the scriptures was giving praise not only to uh the most high heavenly father as he said in matthew 6 9 but he was also giving reverence to his lineage henceforth why he says he came unto the lost sheep of the house of who of israel of the israelites he was called what the conquering lion of the tribe of what yahuda so he did come to seek out his ancestral and his family lineage in order to set them back on the way to ancestral worship which he learned in ancient africa www.voiceofafricaradio.com 94 fm on your dial it's going to be sizzling it's going to be hot because you, as you can see as you've heard my two guests have given me two different answers our african traditional customs and cult cultural practices incompatible with modern religion her royal highness the first said yes they can sit side by side darren henry the journalist said no interesting it would be really really great fun coming back to her royal highness um you you talked about us having our own uh, africans having their own gods or their own kind of worship mm. prior to i think you said the missionaries or or let's say the non-Africans coming into African land. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking, and many people think that the African or the God of Africa mm -hmm. or the God is not the same as the God of the modern world religions. Could you, is that correct? Or well, no. if yes, if not, tell us a, a bit more. Well, no, God is the same. He's really? never changed, no. The, the God of uh, Europe is no different from the God of Africa. That's just a fallacy that was fed to Africa when the missionaries came, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in ancient Africa, before the missionaries arrived, when we understood the entity of God, we knew he, he was there, and we knew he was the source of everything that we, we had and enjoyed. So when the fishermen went fishing, and he had a bumper harvest. What he would do, he would say, ah, God lives here. And what he would do, he would tie, uh, uh, he would build a shrine. You know, as was done, again, I go back to the Bible because I have this with Christians a lot. As was done uh, in the Bible, build a shrine and there they will worship God. Okay? They will slaughter animals and whatever and they will worship God. And so the farmer goes to his farm, has a bumper harvest, he does the same. So you then had all these little shrines sprouting everywhere. And they worshipped it because this is how they identified with God. Now, 
someone came along, and I call it the gun and the mirror principle. Mm -hmm. Now, someone came along and saw the land and saw that it was good. Then they determined, how do we get this land for ourselves and everything good in it? Here are a people who are removed from what we call modern day civilization, you know, which is an advancement maybe in technology, not in mentality per se, but in technology, you know, etc. How do we convince them to do what we want, which is give us what we are looking for, you know, give us the land. As Desmond Tutu said, they said, let's pray. And when we, when we finished, when we looked up, we had the Bible, they had the land. But beyond that, what had actually happened was to convince a person that your God is more powerful than their God and that the God that they're worshipping is not the same as your God. Okay, one, here you are in your in your uh, part of the world and uh, this unusual looking person arrives. Now, when they arrived, we were a superstitious people because we believed in God. We were fighting our battles with pierce and arrows and whatnot. They came with a gun and they said, I will demonstrate to you how powerful my God is and how why he is better than your God. And they said, stand there. Bring me uh, slaves, bring me this, bring me that. And then they will shoot a group of people dead. To dem and then they say to you that um, at the end of the day, see how powerful my God is because he is able to do this miracle and kill a hundred of your enemies with one, one, one. And then secondly. Yes, uh, Her Royal Highness, I'll come back to you in a jiffy, um, www.voiceofafcaradio.com. www.voiceofafricaradio.com www is 94 FM on your dial. It's Straight Talk. It's Sunday, the 17th day of March, 2013. You're locked onto the biggest. You're locked onto the best. Don't touch that dial. Keep it locked. Let me give you our text line number so you can send us a text as the program goes along. It's 7904 at zero seven nine zero four eight nine nine one nine five, or you could keep our studio number handy when the phone lines get activated at twelve noon. It's zero two zero eight one eight zero two five two three. That's zero two zero eight one eight zero two five two three, or the mobile number is zero seven nine six one five seven three eight eight three. I'm going to go back to her Royal Highness because I rudely interrupted her and she wouldn't forgive me and she could maybe cast a spell on me. So, Royal <laughs> Highness, I apologize and it's back to you. No, that's okay. As I was saying, um, we had also uh, the missionaries going to Africa and to demonstrate the power of their so-called God at the time, they had to show us what we saw as miracles. One of them was the mirror. Now, being the sort of people we were, uh, we see someone convincing you that if you can see your image in this in this thing in this glass, this is a miracle from God. Now we know it's rubbish, of course. But these are some of the ways in which we were convinced that the God of the white man was separate from the God of Africa. And slowly and eventually, everything that we believed in, from our cultural practices, from our traditions, from the way we raised our children, from the way we dressed. Mm -hmm from the foods we ate, mm -hmm. began to be sold as something negative. So the African needs must be changed to become more westernized in order to gain legitimacy as a human being. Now, that's a very serious thing. And it was something that was done as, as, as a way. I mean, if you want to take something from somebody, you have to convince them that everything they're doing with that thing is wrong. And the best bit was they took a passage from the Bible mm -hmm. when they brought the book to us. They took a passage from the and That's the other thing. We had an oral tradition and they brought uh, the Bible as a, 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 a you know, they, they told us that everything that this God has said is in this book. And it was something new to us, so we accepted it. And they took a passage in there. And that passage was, you must turn the other cheek. Now, turning that thing is what is, is, is hurting Africa today. 
we must turn the other cheek. Now, the principle of forgiveness in itself, there is nothing wrong with, mm -hmm. but it was taught to us wrong. So when they were raping the women, mm -hmm. when they were taking the babies away and they were selling our brothers and sisters into slavery, they were saying, you know, as a godly person mm -hmm. who loves this God of ours, you must turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that to this day. And Unfortunately, some of our own brothers and sisters have taken the mantle on mm -hmm. and they're using it to uh, subjugate uh, 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 themselves. Africa has taken the mantle of a distorted uh, idea of who God was mm -hmm. and is using it against his own people. This is why we're here now and there is comic relief. This is why that poor child in the village somewhere mm -hmm. can't get uh, mm -hmm. medical treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to look to the West. Who, by the way, like my brother said, I mean, he, he doesn't take rocket science. Our gold, our oil, um, our produce. They t you go to Ghana right now. Nobody will buy Ghanaian produced goods, but they'll buy the ones from the West. You know, mm. everything that belongs to us. There's multinational organizations who go to invest, but invest and take over. I'll tell you something about uh, charities. Mm -hmm. And this is something as a queen mother I've been advocating against, that we need to open our eyes. Charities go, and they want to do good work, which is fair enough. We want good work to be done. But here's what happens. The charity goes a small, uh, to a small community and says, look, we want to come and help build a school. We need land. First mistake. What the elders should do is, Yes, we will give you land and you send us the teachers, but we will be in control of this land and we're not giving it to you, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. to take and, and to keep. But then elders say, because we're such a loving people, oh, hello, welcome, I'll give you land. Look, which one do you want? Go here, go here, take. And then the multinational corporation who is behind that charity comes in and says, ah, I hear there is um, gold on this land. Now, We'll come and help you. We'll make this school bigger if you give us the mining rights. And listen, since you as a chief or as a people don't have that much money anyway, we're going to give you X, Y, and Z amount. Just give us the land and leave us to it. We will develop everything for you. Now, if you think about it, you have diamonds and gold on a land. We're a poor community. That is worth millions and millions and millions and millions abroad. And then every month or once in a while, they come and build a school for you or give you a few thousand pounds in donation. You're telling me that's not disproportionate. Mm. So the idea of charities and aid has to be looked at very, very carefully. What is being done in, um, with comic relief? There are good people who believe that it's, 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 it's helping people in Africa and it is making difference. But the way it's being done is wrong. Let, let, me, let me, before I, before I go to Darren, uh, uh, sticking with Her Royal Highness, let me ask you, being a royal, mm. now, can a royal be a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or can African royalty or royals, because of our traditional customs and culture and practices, can royals like yourself be at the same time Christians or Muslim or Buddhist or... It, 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 can it actually happen? Because uh, I, I don't know. But can a royal be a Christian or Muslim or Buddhist? Yes, because if you, under if you understand who God as an entity is, like I said, for me, the God of Africa is no different from the God of the West. How I choose to portray or see God, I can assure you that I probably have a bigger and a better understanding of who God is than the pastor who is preaching out there. And yes, you can be depending on your perspective of God. The, question, I re, the reason why I actually ask you that is because, for example, if we talk about the pouring of libation, which is one of the core practices of royals and royalty, mm. as per Africa, mm. it's something which I know that modern world religions may not necessarily share. So h how can you be practicing, for example, the pouring of libation on one hand as a royal and be part of, for example, a Christian or a Muslim Religion, right. Have you ever heard when? Uh, have you ever heard libation being poured before? Have mm -hmm. you listened to the words they say? Mm -hmm. Okay, then it makes the question again a non-question. Number two, because when libation, because when, during the pouring of libation, yes. it is it is it is it is stated that, or according to people, that 
you also do mention the ancestors. Yes, and, we and, do. Which is where I think modern world religions are kind of not comfortable because they say that you're kind of worshipping these ancestors rather than worshipping the one and true God. But that's silly. Christ okay. in every utterance said... Mm -hmm. Uh, the God of Isaac, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham. What is that? If it's not mentioning your ancestor, mm -hmm. to me it's silly. I just told you earlier, mm -hmm. Christ at the transfig transfiguration went and spoke to the spirit of Elijah and Moses. Now, if he had a problem against ancestral connection, as I call it, he wouldn't have done that. That's just something that has been taught us again to make us unable to uh, determine for ourselves what is right as far as God and tradition is concerned and to tell us our traditions are wrong. Secondly, don't even get me started on the issue of libation mm -hmm. because we've had this conversation before where I brought out a list mm -hmm. of examples where in the Bible God asked the uh, people to pour libation well, and it specifically said strong drink, slaughter an animal, pour the blood. And, and, and I, I, I deliberately asked about libation. Mm. I'll, come, I'll, come, I'll come back to Diane very, very soon. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking with libation because now you talked about uh, the non-Africans coming to Africa, mm. bringing this, uh, this view that the Africans didn't have a God, didn't understand this, that, and the other. Mm. So basically the, Af the, the non-Africans came in and gave us all those views. Yes. Now, uh, let me take Ghana as, as an example. Mm. Not too long ago, during official ceremonies, official national events, there was the problem of libation. Yes. Now, I actually watched the 56th anniversary, independence anniversary, and there was no problem of libation because I think the government has actually outlawed that because... Okay, help me. No, um, I, I think, uh, again, it's, uh, it's a, a miscommunication of the facts, actually. The issue with, from my uh, knowledge, the issue with the non-pouring of libation has more to do with people's behavior than the uh, outright ban. When for, 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 uh, it's issues that happened that they felt would not would be detrimental uh, to the. If you have dignitaries from abroad, certain types of uh, behavior uh, should not happen. Something actually happened for this decision to be taken. However. In the Gar community now, we're advocating that they bring it back and bring it back straight away because it's part of our culture. Okay. Darren, um, let me come over to you. I'll just say that um, our other guests, Brother Lee and Bandanka, has, has just joined us, will be joining us very soon. Um, so, uh, Darren, let me, let me come back to you. The question I was asking Her Royal Highness. Now, uh, African traditional customs and then sitting side by side with modern world religions, you said a big fat no, it can't sit side by side. Uh, you gave your reasons. Uh, could you give me a little bit more insight as to why you would say no and about a point that Her Royal Highness actually raised. Now it almost seems as if Africans uh, have left their African religions and practices and and are basically, Africans and Caribbean people have gravitated so much towards modern world religions. We can't even see African religions anymore. I mean, what, what happened? I mean, why this? I, I totally agree with you. You know, one of the perspectives I'm coming from, I had the experience, as I said, of um, going to Nigeria, meeting the king of Badagri. The other king I met as well was the king of Lagos. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the king of Lagos is a Muslim. All right, and one of the questions as a journalist that I posed to him was that how do how does Islam sit? with your um, role as King of Lagos and mm -hmm. all your rich African heritage, yeah? And we're talking about the rich heritage of the Ashanti, mm -hmm. the Yoruba, mm -hmm. the Ebo, the Hadindawa, the Danakio, yeah, the Fulani, yeah? I could peel off the, the tribes out of ancient Africa who have had a tradition, yeah, of ancestral worship from before, as Her Royal Highness is saying, the missionaries came into ancient Africa, all right, or into Africa. I often say ancient Africa. Okay. What? www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94FM on your dial. Keep it locked to the biggest and the best. It's straight talk, and we're locked on to www.voiceofafricaradio.com. Voice of Africa. Radio. 94FM. www.voiceofafricaradio.com. There was a quick break, and just to 
recap the text number. It's 07904-899-195. That's 07904-899-195. You keep your text messages coming in. We've been joined by Brother Leader Mbandanka of the Arkebalan Revivalist Movement. He's a spiritual leader. And can I say a good, good morning to you, Brother Leader, and it's great to have you in our studios. Tonight, where it is, it's great <laughs> to be here. And as always, I bring greetings on behalf of the Alkebulan Revivalist Movement in the precious, powerful, and bountiful name of our motherland, Alkebulan Mama Africa, in the sacred spirits of our most gracious ancestors and in a prayer for oneness, hope, and prosperity for all African people on the face of Mother Earth. Africa. To the God of Africa be the glory. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari, it's great to have you. And how has your week been, Brother Leader? How's, how's your week been? Hectic, well, uh, relaxed, chilled out? Busy but blessed, my brother. <laughs> I'm giving thanks and praises. It is, it is a joy to be an African. Fantastic. I asked my guests about their thoughts about comic relief. Did you take part? What are your views? Is it a good thing? Money to Africa? Surely it's a good thing. Tendai Mwari. Mm -hmm. On the face of it, it seems all good and, and all <laughs> wonderful. You know, how mm -hmm. can one criticize the spirit of charity? But I'm, I'm afraid that it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, I hate Red Nose Day. <laughs> um, I have to be frank. I, I think it does more to stroke the national ego of uh, of Britain. Uh, it, it it distorts reality. It projects Africa as and, and Africans as being innately and endemically and perpetually poor and destitute, almost like a decree, an, a, a divine decree, almost like a curse. Okay. Uh, it, it, it portrays Africa as the beneficiary of Europe and Europe as, and Britain in particular, as its benefactor. Well, the reality is the other way around. Mm. Uh, Africa is the beneficiary of Europe and Europe, sorry, Africa, Africa is the benefactor, is the benefactor and absolutely. of Europe, and Europe is the beneficiary of Africa. And the paradox that's facing the African continent, as the Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and Papa Gavi, Marcus Mzai mm. Gavi, observed before, that Africa is the richest continent on the face of the earth, yet Africans the are the most impoverished people. Mm on the face of the earth. Before I come to Darren, because... Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to finish this. Yes, this go, this go on, Darren. Yeah. All right. Um, now, in as I said, in speaking to the uh, the King of Lagos, and knowing about ancestral worship, yeah, one of the things I often say, even when I'm speaking to traditionalists, all right, and nobody should be offended by this because we're groomed in a Western system that makes you think it's what's called monotheistic or in the worship of one God, mm -hmm. but is re in reality and in fact polytheistic. I don't know if you remember two weeks ago, Kofi, I said the program should really be called, okay, um, are ancient African religions compatible with modern day traditions? Okay, because in coming from that perspective, when we ask the question from that perspective, we would know very much so that ancient African mysteries became your monotheistic religions, which is a little what Her Royal Highness was trying to explain. All right, they became the religion, your Judaism, your um, Islam and your Christianity, yeah, they came out of ancient African mysteries. Okay, now if we take a look at the book of Psalms, in Psalms, I'm going to read it from um, 82 1. It says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. That's very important, you know. Mm -hmm. It's saying God judges amongst the gods, plural. Okay, so not according to my opinion. Uh, like I said, you go into educational institutions, yeah, and you will find that your planets and that your days of the week, okay, they're named after Greco-Roman gods and goddesses. Okay, whenever we speak to our Christian brothers and sisters, I say, you talk about the prophets. What about the prophetess? Okay, you talk about the god. What about the goddess? The foundation of the universe is Maat. Maat is what you see on the old Bailey when you see the scales of justice. My art is what you see when you see the astrological sign of Libra. Okay, that was an ancient African goddess who was the goddess of truth and also justice and was and that is the foundation of the universe. So 
in your Bible, it's telling Tanya you. Tanya is one. It's, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there, there are many of them. Asset is another one. Yeah, half, I, I could peel them off for you. But my point is this, is that according to religious books and according to ancient African tradition, there are not just stroke gods, there are goddesses, yeah? And it's a plural, okay? Yet in the congregation, there is a leader, okay? And that's the title we attribute to God the singular. It goes on to say, all right? How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy, free from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. Hear what Psalms 82 6 says. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High God, yeah? This is further backed up by the Red words of writing by Yeshua in the book of John 10:34, where the Jews, the Pharisees who didn't understand the statement, yeah, ye are gods, wanted to kill Jesus. This is the season we're coming into, which is Easter, which is really a reflection of the change in nature that is taking place, being that we're moving, okay, out of the winter solstice into the summer solstice. And there's a lot of symbolism, there's a lot of metaphors, and there's a lot of allegory that goes into your religious beliefs. But in John 10:30. Two, it says, Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you being a man, make yourself God. So the Romans or the um, Jews, or, the, or those, those who called themselves Jews, who were really the tribe of Canaan at that time, they didn't understand or comprehend the principle, all right, at that time of there being more than one. God and Christ answered them is it not written in your law I said ye are gods which you find in Psalms 82 6 so when you're talking about the title God which comes from the German Anglo-Saxon word gut all right it's your perception and your understanding and do you understand the symbolism the algories and also the metaphors that is goes behind religious scriptural teaching and many of our um islamic brothers and sisters christian brothers and sisters and judaic most of the congregation they have no idea that's why they're the congregation and they don't really ask questions mm -hmm. when you take it to an educational perspective yeah and you look at Mars, you look at Venus, yeah, Venus was the Roman goddess of love, mm -hmm. Mars, yeah, was the Roman god of war, Jupiter in Roman mythology, okay, that was the most high, all right, Zeus, where you get in that title, Jesus, he was the Greek, in Greek mythology, he was the most high, mm -hmm. in ancient Africa, when we look at the book of Revelation, it tells us that the faithful witness of the creation of God was Amen or Amun. Amen or Amun, that's an Egyptian deity. You can go into any museum in in France, in New York, in London, and you can walk into any museum and see artifacts from ancient Sumeria, Mesopotamia, ancient Babylon, ancient Egypt. In fact, it's African artifacts that make up most of the museum. And when you look at these artifacts written in stone, it explains our story which was taken and distorted into King James Anglo-Saxon biblical information, into Greco-Roman information, and into Ju Greek Judaic information. And this outformational information that you're now hearing coming forth today we're now beginning to find ourselves looking at the fact that in ancient africa we knew this you cannot serve two masters mm. all right yeah you cannot serve the most high and serve mum and hence for what i say it's not compatible because we try and put square pegs into round holes and try and fit ourselves into a system because of monies because of finance and because of economics and i'm not saying that we shouldn't be wealthy because africa is naturally hear the word naturally wealthy but what we are saying is unless we get back to our ancestral worship why do you you think that the um, European does so well because he worships what he thinks and believes is a God which is in his image and his likeness when you look at the Asians and the Arab they worship and the Hindus they worship a God which they feel is in their image and their likeness who are African Caribbeans worshiping today are we worshiping someone in our image and our likeness no, yeah blonde and blue-eyed www.voiceofafricaradio.com It's 94 FM on your dial. It's Sunday the 17th of March 2013. I'll be coming to Brother Leader and Bandanka very, very soon. And I'm going to ask Brother Leader 
our headline question. Are Asian African traditions and cultures incompatible with modern world religions, i.e. can our African traditional culture and practices actually sit side by side with modern world religions? Her Royal Highness said, yes, they can. Darren, our journalist, said, no, they can't. Brother Leader, what do you say? Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Let, let, let me give the longer answer before I give the <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Tendai Mwari. <laughs> so I, I, I don't suffer our people any, any, any confusion or misunderstanding. Such a question cannot only be subjected to theological analysis. We also mm. have to subject it to historical analysis. And the question we have to ask ourselves is whether historically these or theologically, these uh, concepts have ever coexisted in harmony? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. We also have to ask ourselves an even more specific question, whether it has ever worked for us as African people. That is a question that we have to ask, uh, ask ourselves. And, and I, I, I have a little problem with the title itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, juxtaposing ancient African quote-unquote religion That's right. with modern religion. Yeah. So why is African uh, spiritual traditions ancient, ancient. and so-called world religions modern? You know, who, who, who defines the term? Uh, it's interesting. It's, it's because that's how some people look at it, which I get your point, though. Yeah. I understand where the perception comes from, yeah. and I understand that such a perception exists. But as African people, we have to be critical. We have to be critical. Because the concept of an African spiritual tr tradition speaks to the heart and the soul of Africans. It is how Africans see, experience, and give expression to the presence and the existence of, of God and divinity. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to understand when we talk about spirituality. Spirituality is a way of life steeped in, in uh, a consciousness and reverence to a divine or a supreme creator and divine human cultivation. Africans have been engaged in that process since time immemorial. And we have done that within the context of our African culture mm. since time immemorial. We had a relationship with the creator. We had yes. an understanding and a vision and, and, and an expression of the divine long before we were invaded by Europeans or Arabs or anyone else. In fact, and as has already been said in the program today, that the rudiments of what we now call Judaism, Christianity, Islam, the so-called world religions, the rudiments of that comes out of Africa itself. Mm -hmm. This is why they can't get rid of the concepts and symbolisms of uh, what, what, can, what they call ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. They can't get rid of it. They can't get rid of the concept and the symbolisms of pantheism, which is a word I prefer to polytheism. Because we don't have a concept of polytheism right. in African tradition. Yeah. It is pantheism. It is the, the, the vision and the, the understanding and the, and the viewing of the, the deity, the all and one, yes. or the all in one. Absolutely. And so Africans see the oneness of God, mm -hmm. but we also see the manifestations, the many exactly. manifestations of the one. Absolutely. So it's the all and the one that the African is able to see, we, we view from whether the right, it's, a, it's a, a bringing together of right brain and left brain thinking. We can see the compartments, we can see the, the, the differences, but we can also see the synthesis, the whole, yes. the wholeness, yes? Um, having said all of that, let, let me go to the heart of the question. I haven't lost the, uh, the, that, that essence, uh, my brother. The reality is, and, and I think we have to interrogate how it is that these religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, how did they come to be, quote-unquote, world religions? Mm -hmm. How did they come to be so-called modern religions? And then we have to ask ourselves, as Africans, how did we come to be Christian? How did we come to be Muslims? How do we come to be Jew, uh, Jewish or regard ourselves uh, to be of the Jewish religion? These are questions that we ha have to ask ourselves. And the short answer to those questions is, it is through expansionism 
that these religions have become world religions. It is not, not through prostatization, but through expansionism with a gun or the sword. That is, they've conquered other people and subjected other people to the most brutal and inhumane forms of treatment mm -hmm. and imposed their religion and use their religion to conquer various parts of the world and they've done that in africa with african people that's how africans became christians that's how africans became muslims and i say that with the utmost love for my christian brothers and my muslim brothers and sisters i say it with the utmost love but that is a an historical reality and then they tell us that these are monotheistic religions and that we are polytheistic then they condemn African spiritual traditions on the basis that we access our divine, our creator, through the spirits of our ancestors. Even though that's quoted in the Bible, mm. even though God comes to Jesus even in the Bible through his father Abraham and his father yes. uh, uh, Isaac and his, and, and his father Jacob yes. and says, I am the God of your father. Mm. I am the God of your father Abraham, I'm the God of your father Isaac, I'm the God of your father Jacob. Qualifying, God qualifying God's self yes. through the lineage of ancestors. Even though the book of Matthew is known as the book of the genealogy or the book of the generations or the book of some Bibles actually say the book of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. And pours libation. Yes. What do I mean by that? Before Jesus is mentioned, all of his fathers... From Abraham to Joseph is mentioned before Jesus Christ is mentioned in the book of Matthew that introduces Jesus Christ. Mm. But yet we as Africans are perceived to be heathen and pagan yes. and idolatrous because we pray to our God through the spirits of our ancestors. L let me ask you a question, Brother Leader. You say, you say perceived... But perceived by who? Who perceives us to be idol worshippers, etc., etc.? Perceived by our oppressors. Perceived by our European Christian enslavers, colonizers, and oppressors. I ask you that question because Her Royal Highness actually said... And our Arab Muslim. Yes, Her Royal Highness actually said that if you look at the modern day situation, we've got Africans themselves propagating this modern day, so-called modern world religions, and subjugating... African practices, African traditions, African cultures, no pouring of libation, puberty rights, festival. So, it, it, yeah, so it, it, you talk about the, the, the non Africans perceiving that. Aren't we also perceiving ourselves in some kind of a negative way? Tenaimari, well, that Tenaimari. is, my brother, the natural, the natural consequence of being invaded, conquered, and enslaved. And too often, we understand slavery and colonizations, those vicious systems and institutions of human oppression. Unfortunately, we tend to see them and, and understand them primarily within the context of physical oppression. We don't seem to factor in or give equal credence to the, the effects of slavery and colonialism mentally and spiritually. That is a mistake that we make. So you have Africans who, have you ever heard of the concept of a Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome is, is, is a form of post-traumatic stress. Yes. Uh, is a, is a, is a post-traumatic stress syndrome. Wherein when, if one is captured, uh, and uh, one is captured and uh, what do you call it? Forced to live with the yeah. captor. In prison yeah. by a captor. After 48 hours or so, we begin to, to manifest symptoms of yeah. Stockholm Syndrome, which yeah. is sympathizing with your captor, mm. sympathizing with your oppressor, to the point that you begin to, you lose just the sense of your own identity, the sense of your own personality, mm -hmm. and you become absorbed. It's a, it's a survival mechanism. Mm. You become so absorbed in the personality uh, of, of your captor that you begin to defend without even realizing it. You begin to defend his rights against yours. You mm. lose your sense of your own human rights. 
and you begin to defend and reinforce the rights of your captor mm -hmm. over your own rights. And that, that is what mm -hmm. is happening with Africans who are condemning African traditions and are promoting the traditions of the people who invaded, conquered, enslaved, and colonized us. I'll come back to you, Tendai brother Mwari. leader. Tendai Mwari. Come back to you, brother leader. Hero Highness, let me come over to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked Darren this question, I'll ask you. Now, why does it seem that lots and lots and lots and lots of African Caribbean people gravitate or are gravitating towards the so-called modern-day religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, etc. Et How come African Caribbeans almost i don't know whether i don't know what it is but it's it's almost as if we gravitate so much towards these so-called modern day religions and you have very few africans upholding african traditional practices religions etc now i'm asking you because being a royal you probably would have some kind of insight into that why are we going in a certain direction and not towards a certain african direction I think part of it is what's, uh, what Brother Leader Mbandaka said is the so Stockholm Syndrome. We're sympathizing and falling in love with our captors, number one. Number two, I think we ha as African traditional leaders have a responsibility. We, we are to blame. We have a huge responsibility mm -hmm. to propagate our culture. And I know one thing I have to say in defense of, of a country like Ghana is that certain sections, I named the Ashantis, mm -hmm. I named the Gars uh, to a large extent. We are uh, very protective of uh, some of our traditions, but I don't think we're doing enough. So if when, for, for, for instance, as a traditional leader, I get a lot of people coming up to me and saying, well, why are you wearing this? You know, you know, God doesn't like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned marriage when brother was talking earlier. I, I have an example of a lady saying to me, I'm going to get married. But I don't want my husband to send the, the token drink that we, we do in our tradition. And I said, why? Oh, because, you know, in my church we don't do that and God doesn't like it. And I said, where, where about in the Bible does God tell you he doesn't like this? Oh, well, you know, Jesus Christ came and, and saved us and, and all these things he said we shouldn't do anymore. I said, you're wrong, actually. Have you read the Bible? Didn't it tell you that he went to a wedding, his first miracle, he went to a wedding in Cana, and his mom came and said, listen, we've run out of booze, and mm -hmm. he turned water into wine. That, that was at a marriage ceremony. That was his, we that was his wedding ceremony. It was Yeshua's, if you, know, if you read the original story, mm. it wasn't any wedding cer ceremony, yeah? It was his own personal wedding ceremony, and his marriage to Mary Magdalene. Well... You know, and so therefore, this this is a a young intelligent woman telling me that when I get married, as tradition demands, my husband. I mean, I consider African marriage ceremonies so beautiful. You know, the 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 process where the man's family will go to the house and say, "I've seen this flower in your house, and we want to come and pluck it." And then all manner of questions are asked. They do what we call due diligence to see to they determine that, what family. They call that metaphors. In yes. The, in European culture. Well, they, <laughs> that's a brilliant yes. thing, isn't it? Metaphors, you know, you know exactly. <laughs> And then, and then what we would do is then the, the other family confess with the other family. And the Nigerians do it so beautifully because they even write love letters to the families. Hey, uh, let, let me, let me, it's, it's interesting you talk about marriage now. Mm. Isn't that, because I know it's been, it's been widely asserted that, isn't that in itself the uh, paying of the bride price or whatever mm. it's actually called? Isn't that some kind of slavery? You're selling off the lady to the man. So uh. therefore, the man marries the woman and thinks that the woman is just a product. So uh. therefore, he can treat her as she. These it's are just views that are widely and, and basically, feminists also have that kind of viewpoint too. You know, feminists. Right. Some and again, Western fem feminism. Now, I'll explain the concept of the diary. It's got nothing to do. People abuse things and i think there are people who are abusing the position the same way treating a man as the head the head of the family is being abused uh, as a as a means of you know uh, putting women through all manner of things however the concept of the diary is this i have brought my daughter up mm -hmm. raised her perhaps educated her yes. you are coming to take it and all the benefits that i have instilled in her is going to come into your household your family mm -hmm. We want recompense 
for that. It's a token. It means nothing beyond the fact that the family wants to feel as though all the work has have been put in. It's like in 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 uh, contracts law where you give a pound for a a, a, mi- a multi million dollar company so a contract can be signed. The principle is that. So that when someone says, "Well, I paid your diary, so I bought you, and I can treat you how you want," I want it's a it's it's a, it's, it's, it's wrong. You know, this is not the basis. Something yes, isn't, yeah. it, Mwari, isn't it also a demonstration of the the, the man uh, and his family possessing the means? Yes. By which they can is, look after the woman. Yes. You and, know, and raise a family. Yes. Uh, as well, so it is. It's qualifying also himself and themselves and, and what what we must remember in the African tradition marriage is not a contract between mm-hmm. a man and a woman it is a it is a bonding a divine conjugal bonding between families yes families and at the core of that bonding is the union of this man and this woman but yes. can, I, can, I, can I just say as well, I okay. mean, um, as well as um, Brother Bandaka saying, um, we've got to get into things historically and geography, which I totally agree with. We've also got to look at it from a scientific perspective. It's interesting, first and foremost, that they brought up Stockholm Syndrome, because there's a great, great woman, a lover to bits, called Dr. Joy Degree Leary, all right? And if you analyze Dr. Joy Degree Leary's work, okay, she says, as a race, we're suffering from post-traumatic slavery syndrome yeah. all right yeah which is um, as our guests have eloquently explained uh, we are suffering from the symptoms of being subjugated to torture to kidnap to s- enslavement all right and I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that from we was to take as a race dr. Joy degree Leary's work yeah because she's coming from the impact it has had on us psycho- psychologically yeah to the united nations we would be repatriated yeah because everybody else has been paid for the brutality that they've gone through we've been told oh let's forget about it yeah yet we see europeans honoring their fallen in um ceremonies such as remembrance sunday etc 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 but we're told yeah for the devastation let's, let's not make no a mistake as as the um brother el malik shabazz says or malcolm x says slavery robbed us of our knowledge of our history yeah and just getting back to the um coming together in ma- in in marriage yeah mm-hmm. as as um brother bandaka as, as well as there was a financial concept to it mm-hmm. there was also a scientific concept too it was about making sure the strongest families could interbreed as well to make sure yeah that in the process of the fittest of the fittest survive we had the fittest amongst us to be able to survive there is a spiritual connotation to families coming together bearing in mind that our original royal bloodline is the royal bloodline of the most high that's the original bloodline when you're taking it back to that supreme deity whoever it is you believe in yeah by very virtue of the fact that it is said if you're taking it from a uh, christian perspective i breathed into you the breath of life yeah this is what yeshua meant when he says i and the father are one the essence of the most high is within us Okay, so we look to manifest his essence in our daily lives. Henceforth, we are many, many attributes of that singular entity or that singular deity, as Brother Bandaka was saying. Okay, but this is seen in the book of um, Genesis, where it says, I breathed into you the breath of life and you became a living soul. All right, and when you're talking about your spirit and you're talking about your soul, when you're talking about your spirit, you're talking about oxygen, you're talking about H2O, you're talking about if you never had that breath that spirit okay you'd be brain dead in like a minute in two minutes in three minutes yeah that's why oxygen is so important that's why water is so important but we have a genetic link to that hole to that natural source and that in essence and reality is the royal bloodline that many others have tried to duplicate have tried to copy have stolen have borrowed when i say many others i mean many other races in order to fit themselves into things that really don't concern them all right but at the end of the day they try to tie themselves into our vine so that coming together was also looking at it from a scientific perspective because we wanted those strongest genes that could um 
have the natural immune system that fought against these diseases that have been given to us, smallpoxes, measles, German measles, AIDS, etc, etc, etc. So we also have to look at things when we're looking at it holistically. We have to take into a fact the science of how we are created because if you can comprehend and understand the human body, you can comprehend the most high and you can comprehend the universe www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94 FM on your dial. Keep it locked. You're locked onto the biggest and you're locked onto the best. It's Voice of Africa Radio. It's straight talk. Time check is a quarter to noon. I'll be coming back to Her Royal Highness because I wanted us to touch on this issue of marriage, which, like Brother Lido was saying, is an, uh, is, has got its African connotation. Mm-hmm. Now, I've heard in certain churches why they want for marriages between Africans basically to be brought to the church and basically almost to skip the part you talk about, which is the bride price part, because they say that is almost enslaving the, the lady, and the lady is being bought by this guy, so therefore a human being is, is not a product to be sold. And, and therefore I'm also asking you, isn't marriage supposed to be about love between those two people? Why should you as a parent, because you've spent so much money on the education, almost sell off your child. The reason I ask, actually ask you that is because in the UK today, I've heard about one or two cases where parents of certain children are now demanding two laptops, two <laughs> tablets, <laughs> this, that, and the other. That's how far and how bad it's actually gone. So the Christian churches are saying, you know what, it's the love between the guy and the girl. Let's almost scrap this bit to do with your ancient practices and traditions Aww. and let's allow these two young individuals to go ahead sorry my brother Kofi. Kofi. Go, go on sorry, sorry my sister yes yeah. something in here yeah. before you come yeah. as a, as a, as a, go as brother a ancient african tradition that's what does what, what, exactly. what, what does two laptops and, got to do and it. Exactly. iPods got to do with ancient <laughs> african tradition exactly yeah. and, and Kofi, if it's about love mm-hmm. why don't you encourage them and say listen shall we uh, put the if you are going to uh, have the argument mm-hmm. shall we uh, reconsider this issue of bright price or, or dowry yes. i don't like to call it bright price that's a western concept now and come together as a family, take all the elements, the beautiful elements of our traditional marriage culture, Mm -hmm. and let's use that. Why are you saying, let's go off your traditions and come to the church? Because presumably, Mm -hmm. if you come to the church, the marriage is going to last and you're in love. Mm -hmm. But if you do it the traditional way, you cannot be in love, and the marriage is not, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I think just like Christianity, distorting a message, the entity of God is the same thing. It's the propagation of the message that's wrong. There's also, so, sorry, ten nine more. We need to just define some key terms here. Mm. What do we mean by love? Well, the, before we go there, is before it Hollywood we, love, we're talking yeah, about yeah, no, the no, one but, in the, but, love <laughs> according to Hollywood. Bef- no. Before we go there, um, brother um, Bandaka, I just wanted to to add this. Let's, let's look at you from a factual and a truthful perspective. Okay, then you're saying you're going to abandon your African tradition, let's say, all right, mm. and you're going to go down the Western Road, the Christian Road, all right. Most people get married in a church, mm. yeah. Divorce. If the marriage, marriage, because as 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 she, she just took the words out of her mouth, that her royal highness, from your getting divorced, you don't get divorced in the place where you got married. You get divorced in a court of law. So just a correction in in a factual world that we live in mm-hmm. yeah when you get married in the church the church hands you over to the state yeah that's why you have to sign a register all right that's why you have to get a marriage license mm-hmm. okay yeah and then when you get divorced yeah because you have been handed over to the state things now become contractual all right yeah and when you go into a court of law to get divorced whoever is doing the best financially mm-hmm. normally gets custody of the children yeah normally gets awarded whatever material possessions that you came together to um accumulate or yeah those material possessions are now split yeah so in western um culture marriage is a contract that is conducted first and foremost in a church yet you are then handed over to the state and they now come between you husband and wife to determine or decide depending on your 
economic wealth or background, who gets custody, who gets the house, who get the car, who get the two laptop that you asked for, who get the tablet, etc., etc. Et so, so let's not make no bones about this. Yeah? com. It's 94FM and you're locked onto the big one. This is just an announcement for Straight Talk for the 24th of March 2013 next week. And we'll be playing some audios um, about seven topics, the benefits of slavery, as well as adultery and polygamy, straight from Ghana and straight from a CEO, Space Clotte, who would be doing some kind of a link up. So basically, we've got, we've got some audios for you for the 24th of March 2013. That's next Sunday. And it also touches on topic number one, the benefits of slavery, and topic number two, adultery and polygamy. The benefits of slavery. Well, this, these are <laughs> topics, audio topics wow. to be played, clips to be played next week. So, yeah, don't, don't mess it. It should be interesting. Should it would be, be interesting. It's very interesting. I'd like, talk. To do a, I'd like us to do a talk show on that one. <laughs> and, and find out who's coming on the side of there were benefits for us. www.voiceofafricaradio.com <laughs> is 94FM and your dial. Don't touch that dial wherever you may be, in your kitchen, in your lounge, in your balcony, in your bedroom, on the park. Chasing around the kids in the house, you're locked into the biggest and the best, www.voiceofafricaradio.com. Her Royal Highness, I'll mm. be coming back to you. Now, mm. we've got African traditional religion and you've got the so-called modern world religions. Mm. How come you've got so many people following the modern so-called modern day religions and very few people following African traditional religion? Perhaps the modern, well, so-called modern day religion it has got uh, good uh, public relations in the <laughs> well <laughs> in the <laughs> sense that i think as a as a tradition um as a, a leader i have a responsibility to my people to do good pr on behalf of my tradition so I, I guess Africans that are we African. have fallen short okay. and i think that uh, again it goes back to what we mentioned earlier two two principles we we have been mentally programmed in a way that everything about us you know even the way we dress is considered ancient you, you, you don't do if you don't have your jeans falling down your bottom mm-hmm. and your cap back back to front and the latest nike trainers mm-hmm. then somehow there is something wrong with you i cannot tell you how many people comment on me when i'm walking in the streets with my my scarf head wrap, yeah. yeah my head wrap and i'm taking my children to school and people come in why do you do that and i think why shouldn't i do that black people yeah, i'm sorry own my people. own people <laughs> my own people and i've been told i've I'm, I, as a, a traditional leader i have to have uh, my beats on at all yeah. times and people say but why do you do that that has got to be voodoo who, you know who are these people my own people okay. And then the so for me, I think that there has been a programming, a very clever, and there is still a very clever programming going on, to make us think everything about us. You have children growing up in this country when you cook the food, and I've been in homes where children, ew, yeah, African kids mm-hmm. going, ew, that smells awful. I want to that? go McDonald's. Where did they get Indoctrination. That? They're oh, in the schools. Mm-hmm in the programs they watch on TV, in what they listen to, in what their friends tell them. And it is a tragedy. If you as a parent, if you as an African, do not stand strong and instill in these children that there is nothing wrong with you, mm-hmm. your identity is yours. Mm-hmm. And I say that to my children all the time. Is it, you talk about uh, getting it from schools, from the TV program, mm. from the radio shows, uh, from friends, etc., etc. What about the role of us Africans ourselves? It, because, like you're saying, in certain homes, uh, the food is 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 is, Too is not smelly. promoted, and etc. Don't you think that Africans, we Africans ourselves, have a role to play? As per, because I've, I I heard by the by the leader a long time ago when he was talking about how he was brought up. I think in the church, yes, that was easy. similar to lots of us. Mm. Now, if we have been able to. Think for ourselves. Confession and is good for the soul. Think for ourselves, and 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 I and I was the same. Now, if we've been able to think for ourselves and see that this is not really for us, how come lots of African parents cannot see it this same way and instill the good things of our practices and our culture, which other communities, our Asian brothers, our Arab brothers, do instill in their children? It don't uh, shouldn't you be pointing a finger at African? 
Well, I am. I think we have a huge responsibility. Listen, if we, we, we have, uh, we're in the modern day where uh, somehow you can get information. Someone once said, if you want to hide information from the black man, put it in a book. Mm-hmm. We need to start researching. We need to start finding the truth. We need to read. We need to find the truth for ourselves. And if we're not doing that, then the, look, if I have a company mm-hmm. that I want to succeed, and you have a company that I want to fail. Mm-hmm. I have a duty to promote my company and make your company look bad. And this is what's happening. Now, if you sit there and you don't promote your company, you cannot blame me for doing my job and doing it very well. You know, and this is what's happening. Where the concept is being fed to us, that there is something fundamentally wrong with this and everything about you. Including if you our don't, religion. Exactly. Okay. If you don't do anything to empower yourself in the way that you say, no, no, actually... I'll take the good things and hold on to them, but you cannot tell me there's something wrong with me. Then you cannot blame the person who has an agenda for doing their work very well. How can you? Brother Lila, if, if I can come, come over to you. Now, we've heard from Her Royal Highness and from Darren as well, and I'm just thinking African traditional religions as against these so-called modern world religions. Now, these so-called modern world religions are building schools, they are doing healthcare facilities, and lots of different parts of Africa, they are doing social projects, etc., etc. African traditional religions and are, and are, uh, we are, uh, it's almost not seen, so it's almost as if the so-called modern world religions are benefiting and promoting and helping the African cause. Uh, could you explain? Tenai Mwari. Tenai Mwari. Uh, yes, I, I think we uh, I, I think the context is the same as, as the context that uh, Queen Mother and, um, and Brother Darren. Darren has already given. Uh, it is to be found in what we call from the Kiswahili word the ma'afa. Mm. Ma'afa in Kiswahili means great destruction or disaster, mm. colossal destruction. And I think we lack a, a, a full understanding of the colossal destruction that has uh, been visited upon Africa and African people over the last 500 years under the Europeans and 1400 years under the Arabs and the extent to which that has damaged indigenous African institutions. We had in Africa and still do, not in the same robust uh, 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 manner, but we had and still do our traditional systems mm. that are designed to promote, preserve and protect our interest as a people. But when the Europeans came in with their Christian religion, when the Arabs came in with their Muslim religion, they used those religions to justify the, the, the destruction of African institutions, including our rites of passage programs or mm. coming of age programs, mm. where we educated our children according to our culture to serve our national interest. That is what the British educational system does. It is not an objective process of instilling academic skills. No, no, no. You come out of the British educational system, grounded in British national culture, shaped by British political objectives. Mm. This is why in my organization, we always say education is, is politics spelled with an E. Education is politics spelled with an E. What is politics? Politics is the art and the science of power acquisition and nation building. Therefore, the educational system is the institution that generates the mindset and creates the, uh, the, the, act, the skills or creates the skill base for per- perpetuating and promoting the political objective of the society in which we live. This is what we have to understand. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what does this mean for the African continent or for African people who are in European educational systems? We are trained, we are trained to reinforce European political objectives. Mm -hmm. That's what we are trained for. Even in Africa, our educational system is very Eurocentric. Yes? So we come out not thinking like Africans. We come out thinking like Europeans. That's correct. We come out promoting European and Eurocentric interests and ideas. But Brother Leader, you and I were... Ten nine were, 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 were. You and I and lots of our, our listeners were educated 
in Africa and elsewhere with that same Eurocentric education, as you call it. However, we've been able to inform ourselves of how that may not necessarily be good for us. How come lots of Africans cannot be and think like us? Tell we mm -hmm. have to continue. We have to re rescue and reconstruct our African philosophy, our African ideas, mm -hmm. our African cultural systems mm -hmm. and spiritual systems. We have to rescue and reconstruct that and make that the basis of all our institutions, mm -hmm. whether our spiritual institutions, our educational institutions, our legal institutions, mm -hmm. our political institutions, our healthcare institutions, all our institutions must be steeped and grounded in our African tradition. www.voiceofafricaradio.com www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94 FM on your dial. Sunday, 17th March 2013. You're locked onto the big one, you're locked onto the best, wherever you may be, on the road, in your car, on the tube, on the train, and keep it locked onto the biggest one. We're talking about our African traditions and customs incompatible with modern world religions. Um, Her Royal Highness said yes, they should be compatible, they should be able to sit side by side. Darren said no, they can't sit side by side. I'll come back to Brother Leader because he was supposed to have given me a brief uh, synopsis of his views and then he gave me the lengthy version. So, Brother Leader, I'm coming back for the brief version. Tenaimwari. Yes, I, I hope the, my opening remarks mm -hmm. laid the backdrop for understanding that as a, as a people, we are Christians or Christianized because we were invaded, conquered, enslaved, and colonized by Europeans, Christian Europeans. And some of us are Muslims because we have been Arabized by invading, by Arabs who invaded, conquered, and enslaved. Yeah, Arabs, a mixture of Hindu, Turk, Greek, Ro um, Italians, French, etc., etc., etc. Absolutely, et absolutely. With their Semite or Semitic people. So no, they, they, it's the same as mm. those um, Khazars from Russia. They have supplanted the original Israeli tribe, just as your... Ottoman Turks, your Greeks, your French, your English as well, mixed with uh, Asian stock, have supplanted your original Kushite tribe of Kidar Arabs as well. Okay, uh, oh, oh, we could have we could have a, a debate. <laughs> we could have a big <laughs> debate, but if you on, take it back to that, a, if that, all all modern religion comes out, if you take it back to Abraham, yeah, yeah, all modern religion comes out of Abraham. What was he? He was from Chaldea. He was a Chaldean Kusha. It's a fact. Are there black people in Japan? Yes. Are there black people in China? Yes. Are there black people in Iran? Yes. Are there black people in Iraq? Yes. This is a fact that's written on the wall. So, where where we could debate. The, the, the issue is when you take it scientifically, historically, that royal blood of the most high, as I was speaking about, it has pervaded or has been all across the planet. Just to say, Tenaimari, what, what is not in dispute is the, the origin of Afri the African presence in various parts of the world that preceded various other people who occupied these other parts of the world. What may be in dispute is what we recognize as Arabic culture today and whether that is authentic African culture. And I think that, that this is where we have, to, we have to draw the line. We have to be clear about our definition of what we mean racially when we say, when, when we say African and what we define racially as African mm -hmm. and what we define culturally as African. And I think that's where the, the confusion may come in. But let, let me come back to, the, um, to, the, to this point uh, that... Prior to these invasions, prior to the conquest of African people, we were practicing, and we still do, to a certain extent, practice our authentic indigenous traditions. Mm. These religions are expansionist. These religions are totalitarian. The, 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 in other words, they spread themselves throughout the world and with an intent of making the entire planet subdued under that particular religious practice. This is what they have attempted to do. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, how can it be a good thing? <laughs> that is the point. And so, so the short answer to my position is, insofar as Christianity has expressed itself as a expansionist and totalitarian religion, meaning the only way to, to God, God is through Christ, to, through Christ according to the teachings of the Christian Bible, in, insofar as it is totalitarian 
an expansionist insofar as Islam is also totalitarian and expansionist. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet, meaning that is the only way or the best way um, to access God. Then as long as, insofar as these are totalitarian expansionist religions and uh, insofar as these religions and their practitioners have invaded, conquered, and enslaved and seek to eradicate African spiritual traditions, having enslaved and conquered Africans, the answer has to be no. Um, these religions are not compatible with our indigenous African spiritual system. www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94FM on your dial. I'm glad to say the phone lines have now been activated. The number to call is 0208-180-2523. That's 0208-180-2523. And the mobile number is 07961-573-883. That's 07961-573-883. And you can send us your texts on the text line at 07904 Eight nine nine one nine five. That's zero seven nine zero four eight nine nine one nine five. And just to remind you that on next week's edition of Straight Talk, a CEO Space Clotte, uh, I think, has got some audio clips ready to be played for the benefits of listeners. The first uh, clip has to do with the benefits of slavery. That's the benefits of slavery, clip number one. And clip number two has got to do with adultery and polygamy. So that's something to watch out for next Sunday, the 24th day of March, 2013. We've got CEO Space Clotte, who's currently in Africa, um, giving us some clips. The first clip has to do with the benefits of slavery. And the second clip has got to do with adultery and polygamy. You're locked into the biggest one. That's voiceofafcaradio.com, 94FM on your dial. Don't you touch that dial. Um, keep it locked. Um, it's 94FM. Time check. It's just about 10 minutes past the hour of 12. I believe we may have a caller on the line. I believe we may have a caller on the line. I believe we may have a caller on the line. Hello? 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 Can we hear the you? caller? Yeah, I can hear him in the headphones. Good afternoon, caller. Uh, good afternoon, this is Nigeli. Um, I'd just like to say a good afternoon to Namanye and Brother Lidia Mabataka. Hiya. Hello? Yeah, please please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah. Um, I, my contribution is more in relation to the question of um, our, our traditional our religion, traditional religions compatible with modern religion, however you wish to phrase that. And I, I kind of might want to make two points. Um, why do we have to be compatible with modern religion? Are we using modern religion and our compatibility as a way of justifying or validating what we believe in? Because I think this has caused us a number of problems, not only in terms of us rejecting um, traditional religion, but even within traditional religion itself. You'll find it very hard to, you know, to find it in its pure form, um, because we, to, we, we're trying to dilute what we believe, and we end up diluting the essence of what it is. So I think we have to be very careful, because we do this quite often in terms of how our clothes are, are compatible with European clothes, just to make it look like, you know, our, our, our clothing is of some worth or how our food is compatible or how our, you know, we originated from Europe or that kind of behavior just to ju justify and validate who we are as a people. Um, the second thing is I don't personally think it is compatible. At the end of the day, Christ the, the, the God that the Christians believe in is a God that has a son named Jesus. He said the only way to the Father is through me. So the only way to have it, according to the Christian Bible, depending on what verse you look at, by the way, is to go through Jesus. We don't have that in traditional religion. I don't remember anywhere in our, my traditional religion that says, in order to get to God, I have to go through Jesus. So how is that compatible? In, in some way, we're compromising. The Christians are compromising when they're saying, oh, we can work with you. Because according to their book, and that's what they use to justify doing whatever they do back in Africa, there is no other God but Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the only one God. He was baptized. God came down. He died for our sins, so we don't have to make any sacrifices, etc., etc. So I do not believe it's 
compatible. At the end of the day, I don't even think we really need to be asking that question because the Christians could do what they want to do, but we need to focus on what we're doing. And what we're doing shouldn't have mean that we have to justify that we're on the same level as modern religions or whatever you want to call it. So, so, so can I ask you, I mean, how then do we um, get our, our, our African and Caribbean brothers and sisters not to gravitate so much towards these so-called modern-day religions? It's almost as if every African and every Caribbean and every household actually know is almost going to church or going to the mosque or going to these so-called modern-day religions. How, 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 how can we curb that? You know, I, I think it's, there is a, a, it's, it's quite a complicated issue, and I'm, I'm kind of using myself as an example of, of what, we have, what I've kind of gone through in terms of transitioning. The Christians are very good in terms of their propaganda. In every aspect of your life, it is there somewhere. Even more so, like, you know, in terms of what they do, they, they've got booklets, they've got explanations. I've been trying to find out a lot about my traditional religion for a long time. And even when you are looking for it, you find very hard, it's very hard to find the pure version. I think also the problem we have now is we've become very spiritually lazy. We, we're kind of the microwavable generation. And I don't mean to offend people, but I find Christianity is like a microwavable religion. People who are Christians, I find you could be a very good Christian and not actually have any spiritual growth throughout the process of you being there. So we need to kind of go through that education system where we value learning, we value the kind of hard work to, to spiritual growth within yourself. And then you will, you'll kind of start to realize you're not satisfied with this microwavable type of, of you know, spirituality. So I think in a sense we kind of need to top up our, our propaganda in terms of what it is what is African traditional religion? What does it mean? What is the validity? Because if somebody tells you something wrong, you are able to defend and say, this is not the case. I cannot justify libation to a person who's saying libation is bad if I don't know what libation is. So all these things, we need to go on the internet, we need to put it in different languages, we need to go on YouTube, we need to go everywhere that an average person will look. We need to be there. But at the same time, we need to kind of have our own education system instead of relying on the British education system to educate us in every aspect of our lives. We need to home educate as well in all aspects of things because when you're home educated and you have the African-centered education, it creates a spirit in you that can discern the truth or yearns for more knowledge. And so that if somebody's coming with you to you with something less, you're able to say, no, this is not the case. So I think it's a matter of those who have the knowledge, sharing that knowledge and also having that system of education where we can appreciate and see what the truth is. Thank you very much, Carla, for your brilliant message. Um, I'll come over to Her Royal Highness. Now, you heard the caller saying we have got to up our education, we've got to up our, she said, propaganda. Yes. Is that is that the way forward? This is what I was saying earlier. Um, our PR needs to be stepped up. Well and truly, and, and Ajale is right. Uh, before I even go into uh, answering that, I, I wanted to um, say something about how the concept of uh, going to go through Christ falls flat on its face. And and I, I have, I think they're called the Uruguay, uh in the Amazon forest, and they've, they've not really embraced modern-day civilization as we know it. They, they lead their lives and live off the land. Now, I always ask pastors, I say to them, look, these are a people presumably, according to the Bible, created by God. Now, are you saying to me that if any one of those people die, they don't know anything about Christ, they die, you're telling me that you're condemning them to hell because they, they uh, choose to a life that God has created for them. I say, well, if they, they're ignorant of Christ, then, then they are going to die and go to hell. How does that make sense? God, in, the God, the entity of Almighty who created the entire universe chose to put a certain people in a certain geographical loca location. And you're telling me, just because they haven't heard of someone in Israel somewhere or a Hebrew uh, um, a person who came on earth and preached a certain uh, gospel, you're telling me that you condemn them to a certain life. That's number one. And I also find the concept of Trinity itself very, very clever. Because on one hand, we're being taught that uh, God is monotheist. Uh, you, you know, um, we, I understand, as I've said from the beginning, that the God of Africa is the same everywhere. God, the entities, is one and one alone. Now, but then the Christian tradition tells us that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
which is which which are we supposed to be believing so here we are saying well like brother mbandaka said that there are a pan, we we have a pantheist uh, a traditional concept in africa where we know there is the godhead but we understand the roots with which god uh, manifests himself and then the western tradition says no 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 everything about that is wrong but at the same time he's telling you god who is a, a father a son and a holy spirit do you understand how very cleverly we're being indoctrinated to 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 can, to I, say, can I just back up can I, before you actually come in we have a caller another caller on the line Seem to hear. No, I, I don't think we can. We're getting the feed. Uh, can I, D Darren, Darren, just just come in one second. Then. Can I? Can I? Can you? Can you hear me? Yes. Can I just back up what um, Her Royal Highness is saying here? Yeah. When you're talking about that Trinity concept, that Trinity concept was placed in your um, Anglican versions of the Bibles because we were dealing with people who were not used to females being at the head structure mm. yeah of um, our 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 governments all right a a ancient Africa system was actually a, a paternal or a maternal mm. system of um, hierarchy okay mm. and what happened was when the Europeans came and saw this, yeah, because they came from a very masculine and a very, um, it must be said, yeah, uh, a homosexual society, all right, dominated by men, all right, they took the mother figurehead out of um, the religion, yeah, henceforth the Trinity, because when you look at the original Semitic manuscripts, yeah, that trinity of god the father god the son and the exist. holy spirit it's not there it doesn't exist it Darren, only came into existence uh, yeah. with the roman catholic church yeah. let me just interject there's i think there's a caller another caller on the line hello yeah hello hello caller yes hello good afternoon good afternoon yes um is that two o two o eight one eight o two five two three isn't it yes please go ahead with your contribution let me just interject. Yeah. hello Yes, please go ahead with your contribution. We, we can hello, hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Well, um, I would like to make a contribution to the program. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yes go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I must say good evening to the, the, the members right there at the moment. But um, I've got a, a thought I would like to give to the panel. And um, you, we've um, read the Bible, and the Bible talks about the building of um, the Tower of Babel. Yes? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Yes. You you heard about the Tower of Babel. It's, um, the, the, the story in the Bible about the Tower of Babel? Yes. 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 Well, I think um, in this time, that's what is being built. Yes? The Tower of Babel. Yes? Yes. We, really you so understand what I'm saying? Yes. The whole world is bent on building itself with this philosophy and psychology as we see. And um, I think we need to look at the concept of the Tower of Babel to understand this, the position that we Africans are in. And um, that philosophy and all these things have to be torn down. For us to go forward, I I cannot explain it any better, but um, I think that's um, one of our problems as Africans to unite. And until, because if you notice, the whole world is being contaminated with all these doctrines and philosophy, and they're talking about reaching higher heights, which is heaven. I don't know. Uh, there's no heaven of such that they'll ever reach this higher calling to the tower. But that's what is the problem, I think, of us Africans to understand when we read the Bible, what it's actually trying to tell us in this time, in this modern time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your call. Um, I think we may have another caller lined up on, okay, I think they have actually gone. Um, it's Voice of Africa Radio, www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94 FM on your dial. Time check, it's almost 25 minutes 
past the hour of 12. Let me give you the studio numbers again. It's 0208-180-2523. Um, the mobile number is 0079-61-573-883. That's 0079-61-573-883. And you can reach us via text, and it's 7904 Eight nine nine one nine five. That's zero seven nine zero four eight nine nine one nine five. I'm not sure whether we've got any text messages, but we'll be coming to text messages very, very soon. Can I go over to Her Royal oh. Highness? Go on. Uh, Kofi, I just wanted to say something very quickly about the Tower of Babel concept. Yes. And I'm going to say categorically, it's a load of nonsense. It's total nonsense. I'll tell you why. In the beginning, in Genesis, in the Bible itself, it tells us uh, Adam and Eve were the first uh, humans to be created. It didn't say they were the only humans to be created. And there's something very interesting in the Bible. It also tells us that uh, somewhere along the line, I think it was uh, uh, Cain who killed Abel. Was that right? Yeah. And he ran away from his family. And on the way, he met a woman and married her. Now, if you're telling me that uh, there were only two uh, people on earth at the time with their offspring, where did this woman came from that he married? Her Royal Highness, I would have to interrupt. Uh, I think we've got... Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Uh, hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, just call in to make some contributions. Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, uh, I think the topic of today is a very, very interesting one. And uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to address issues seriously. Uh, it, 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 I think it's based on religion, tradition, and culture, vis-a-vis -vis modernization. If you look at religion, tradition, and culture, they are all about security of a people for the socio-economic, uh, uh, eco-political control of their destiny. I want to believe that should be the case. So it's all about actually politics. Remember, when the colonial masters came to Africa, like my sister in the studio, um, uh, she, 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 she is uh, a queen mother of a particular group of people within Ghana, not the whole of Ghana, talk less of the whole of Africa. Now, there may be some people in other parts of Ghana who actually may not even recognize her. The danger we are now having is that we have political appointees and we have uh, traditional appointees. Now, the traditional appointees used to be the only appointees we had before the coming of the colonial master. Now, the colonial master has come and the colonial master has established a new state for us and a government. Are we going to now be maintaining the two together? When we maintain the old ones and the new ones, we are paying two separate people because the traditional leaders are not leading free of charge. They are paid. If, if you listen to my sister carefully, you will discover that she is actually a politician because the way she analyzes things, she's educated. If we line all these things into the political atmosphere where everybody in Ghana or in a particular locality will have the power to appoint her, I think she can do far more. What we are now doing is that we are doing politics hiding behind religion, culture, and tradition. And it's dangerous. I want to proceed a bit further. Uh, I'd, 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 because, I'll have to give you two seconds because we've got lots of other callers. I know there are so many callers. The second issue of concern here is that we need to understand that eh, when they say the stock uh, what is it? Is it Stockholm syndrome as uh, introduced by Brother Bandaka? It's telling us how dogs behave when they are captured. But in the first place, we had this culture, religion, and so on that were instruments for us to fight against our captures. Those cultures have failed us. We need to be clear about that. Even the religious leaders are more religious today. They are more Christians and Muslims than you can ever think. And they are into the politics. So what we are seeing is that for, for us to continue to be like dogs, following the master that has got us, we are behaving natural. However, we should understand that the master has got something that we don't have. That's why he is able to get us. So we should start talking about what the master has got that we don't have. And then let us look at those things rather than going back to where our fathers employed something and they didn't work for us. Then let us use that platform know what they have they are organized they are organized they are functional institutions we have malfunctional institutions
institutions. So hey, thank, thank you very much, Carla. Um, Hero Highness, if you could respond just about in two seconds. I, I, I'm not sure I understand his comment that uh, uh, I'm a politician. or Is he trying to say that I should be in politics? Or is he trying to say that I'm speaking, uh, I'm hiding behind culture, but I'm truly a politician? I don't exactly, understand yeah, that. That's what he's uh, Well, I, I can assure you I'm not a politician. <laughs> I'm a social commentator and I happen to have a head on my shoulders. Secondly... Uh, the idea that uh, nobody, a lot of people may not recognize me. This is what our hierarchical structure is. We have uh, a, a system of decentralization. So, of course, not the entire Ghana. Is There is no such thing as a king of the entire Ghana. So that, uh, to me, does not make sense either. Um, the, what I was saying before uh, the caller came on. Harold Hannes, briefly, before you, you actually proceed, I think we have another call on the line. Hello, caller. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I wanted to give a, I want, I wanted to give a, a Islamic perspective, um, and uh, the, the statement that I would want to say uh, regarding Islam and, and African traditions is that they're combat- compatible. Um, against African religions, they're not compatible. So, so my my proof for that is that Islam. Um, you have Muslims from Gambia or other parts of Africa, and they they adhere to their traditions, their dress, the way they eat different foods and stuff. Islam accepts all of this, and what it doesn't accept is the actual polytheism. And I would love to prove, I would love to ask um, and show how how um, Islam is against um, po- po- polyfe- polytheism, basically worshiping other than the one true God. Um, so if I can have a chance to do that, if possible. Okay, I mean, um, if, if if I mean, we'll we'll take your details and we could we could talk off air. Um, but thank you very much for your call, and I'd have to go back to my guests who are actually seated in the studio. Um, Brother Leader, would you like to come in? I mean, people have talked about African. Has brother gone because I, I would. Uh, I think he, he has. He has. How you would justify uh, yeah. um, his, his claim. Um, uh, we'll, we'll take his, bit, his details off air. I think we have another caller coming. Hello, caller. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Frank. I'd like to contribute to the uh, the program. Please go ahead. What's going on? Yeah, please Hello. go ahead. Yeah, um, I'd like to say that uh, what about uh, the with the concept of the African traditional religion vis-a-vis the Christianity. Uh, what I know is that the African traditional religion has got more extraordinary things to do with people's life rather than what's going on in this world. What's happening is today, when you go to your traditional religion and practice it, you have a lot to do, like going through the right channel, the way we marry, the way we worship God. Before the coming of the Christianity, Africans knew God through so many things. The way we named our kids, like Nyamiche, the way we, we, we pray, Pori Labation, mentioning the name of God, the way we pray, we, the, 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 even the drum language was also saying something our poetry and everything show that we knew God. We were worshipping God through the ancestors. And when the Christianity came, they said, look, we are worshipping through the ancestors, the trees, the rivers, because the Africans knew that these people have got special spiritual sin more than the living. And it wasn't the wrong thing at all. Because even those then, people were, there was, there was, like, uh, there was something like, pregnancy was not was not as much as today because in those days if you don't go through the puberty right what they recognize for you what they do to your family was a shameful act so there there was no way people could go and get pregnant unnecessarily you have to go through that right channel but with the modern things going on people all these things are happening uh haphazardly so I think that if we continue to practice our own culture and make sure that we inculcate to the kids 
whom we have now, they will be able to understand. Now, it is very sad that when we speak to our children, we don't take, give, give our mother language is not messy to them. So they, at the end of the day, they tend to forget or they don't know their mother's uh, language that they are supposed to know. All that they know is the English that they know. But if you speak Chi, you speak Yoruba, you speak other language to them, they don't understand. Because we ourselves are looking down upon our own culture, which is not good. So if we value our own tradition and the way we were uh, practicing our own culture, I think that would, that would have been fine for it to make sure that things are the right way. And the, the worst thing about this is that the traditional religion was not documented like Bible. You understand? Most yeah. of the practices were not documented. So we rely on oral tradition. And much as our forefathers are dying, we tend to lose our, uh, our, our values. Because we are, they were handing down the messages, practicing it, and then those people who were supposed to follow it were not also doing it. So at some point, I can't blame the kids so much or the generation today so much because we we have documented all these for other generation to read and know what was going on and practice it all these things wouldn't have happened so this okay, is thank you very happened. much for your call, call caller uh, i think we have another call on the line hello caller hi there i'd love to make a contribution please yeah please go ahead briefly um is this is this sorry right okay um um, basically, uh, th th there's one God, and I think that can be ag agreed by everybody that there's one God. So where where um, I think the uh, the uh, African religions go wrong is that they they actually worship spirits, they actually worship images and statues. Is or, that really true? And it's very true. I would say to the caller, what about the goddess? Because I didn't make up that word, yeah, and that word existed. <laughs> Yeah, before you was born and before I was born. So to, to say that the, 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 I don't think you comprehended what Brother Bandaka was saying or what we were saying. Yes, in ancient Africa, we comprehend, let me finish, let me finish. Yes, we comprehended, yeah, the one God concept, mm -hmm. but we were manifestations of that one God concept. So therefore, being manifestation, having a part of the royal bloodline of the Most High inside of me makes me a God. Having a part of the royal bloodline of the most high inside you i breathed into you the breath of life and you became a living soul and not everyone has a soul not everybody hold on a second brother not everybody has a soul don't think everybody has a soul but you are adopting european principles because you are taking away from the female okay and in our ancient culture we acknowledge just as much as we acknowledge the prophet we acknowledge the prophetess just as much as we acknowledge the god we acknowledge the goddess but they all came under but having attributes of that singular divine entity and being. And that concept is lost in monotheistic religion, my brother. If I, if I can come back, if I can come back, Darren, I mean, yeah, what, what, what you have, just very briefly, what, what you have likened here, you have likened God to the creation. Basically, you're saying that, um, or I think what you're saying is that God lives within the creation. We have a, 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 a physical <laughs> connection with God. God is separate from his creation the, th the things that the things that are are godly are you, you the creations cannot reach that level we cannot create anything all we can do we can make something out of what is already creation created so so what we're saying here is that god the, the level of god and the reason why we worship him alone is because he is not like his creation we need man we need woman we have babies god does not have babies Right, so, 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 why are we, so, so, so why are we made in his image and likeness? Yeah? How can you say, why, why are we, hold on a second here, bruv. Why are we made in his I image and likeness? You're saying, yeah, essence, your essence of, let me finish. The essence of what you're saying is that God is just a spirit, yeah? And that, according to the writings, according to the Quran, according to the Bible, according to the Old Testament, is not 
true God is a physical entity, a spiritual entity, and a living soul entity. As they say, I am a spiritual being having a human experience in this body. So for you to say that God or the Most High or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only a spirit being is not true according to the writings that have been left on the planet. Sorry. Brother, brother leader, come in briefly. Yes, ten nine one. My, my beloved brother, what, what's your name, please? Sorry, sorry, my sir. My name, my name is Adil. Double A D I L. It's, it's an Arabic name that means justice. D I L. Adil. And, and are you Double African? D I L. Yes, it's, a, it's an Arabic name that means justice. Sorry, sir. Are you an African? I'm from African origin, no doubt. Oh, oh okay. Black man from Afri right. African Let origin. Okay. May, may I just pick you up on just a couple of points and I, I, I want you to be as brief as I'm going to try to be, okay? Uh, first and foremost, I, I think you said earlier on when you called before that, the, that Islam is compatible with African traditions but not compatible Islam. with African culture. Is that what you said? If I could just, just like, it's very difficult to hear, and I'd, if we can somehow speak a little bit louder, I would love to, you know. Oh, can, can you hear me a bit better now? Yeah, I definitely can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I believe you said when you called before that Islam is compatible with African traditions, but not with traditions. African culture. Did I get that right? Not, not African um, religion as such, no. Not, not really. The tradition, yes. Not the religion, no. Well, how do you separate the two? How do I separate? Because tradition is, is that which we pass from one generation to the next. And if we understand anything about African culture, African culture is permeated by its spiritual traditions uh, and is totally inseparable. Every aspect of African culture is permeated with its spiritual traditions, with it, which is at the core of the culture. So how do you separate that? Also, Islam came out of African culture. African what, culture didn't come out of Islam. What, what, that what, point has moment. to be Let, taken to you. What, what, one moment. How, how do you reconcile that? How do you separate tradition from African spiritual systems? Okay, as, as, as I said, you, you, can have, you can have traditions of, of, of marriage. You can have traditions of treating women beautifully. You can have traditions of food. But what we're talking about here, what is Islam is against, is about taking your worship and giving it to spirits or statues. It is this. this I think you're misunderstanding aspect. me, my brother. I'm, I am saying, how can you, for instance, okay, let's just take the example of marriage. How can you separate yeah. an African marriage ceremony from the spiritual system that mm -hmm. defines the concept of marriage and the marriage ceremony? How can you separate it? It's quite easy. If, if that marriage ceremony involves worship to other gods, or it involves, um, you know, giving, um, you know, sacrifice to other gods. This, this is these so what, are, we are Africans who are giving an expression through our culture to God as God. God is manifested to us. So what do you mean by other gods? Let, let, let me explain what exactly what I mean by other gods. Is that is that there is one, uh, uh, there's one true God here, one true God, okay? And, and... What do you mean by that? Is that there, when I say one true, that means there must be false. There are many, many, many hundreds or millions of false gods, things that... Pe which is, so one, which is a true God and which is a... Manifested himself. Which right? is a true God and which is a false God? Or the what, what, I'm tra what I'm saying here is, it, if that, well, when we say false gods... Uh, a god. I want to give a definition to a god, and a god is something, is something or somebody, something or somebody that is worshipped. So people have taken the sun as a god, the moon as a god, stars as a god, women as god, men as god, money as god. Like who? People like us. We, we are human beings. Human beings uh, have taken. If you are referring to worship. African people and African tradition, that is a African misconception. Have taken My brother. African people have taken spirits as a god. Why? Because you... you, you two things, just before you come in, Queen Mother. Two things. Sorry? If, 
if you if you are saying that African people worship the moon and the mm -hmm. sun, you are misunderstanding a, prof a, a fundamental concept of African spiritual Absolutely. traditions. Africans may see the wonder mm -hmm. of God manifested through the sun Absolutely. and may give reverence to the God essence manifested through the sun. Arabs and Europeans right coming to Africa misunderstand this and say Africans are worshipping the sun. Well, let me give that point, please, then, sir. Please. Well, okay. If why, why do why do you why do you not, as Africans, give that same reverence? And Islam calls you to give that reverence, not to the created mm -hmm. sun, but give it straight, straight and direct to the creator mm -hmm. of the sun. That is the point here. No, giving reverence is some is is an act of worship. Giving, oh. ever, giving reverence is an act of worship, which oh, should be oh, only oh, given. Okay, hold, hold on. Let, let, all right, let's speak your language then. Well, not really your language, but the the, the language of the Arabs, as 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 defined through the practice of Islam. When you go to Mecca for Hajj, yes, have you been to Hajj? Sorry, sir. I, have have you been to Mecca for Hajj? Have I been to where? Sorry, Mecca for to no, observe I haven't Hajj. Been to Mecca yet, no, no, I'm but you know about Hajj. No, I haven't, sir. No, 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 but you know about it. I definitely know about it. Yes, yes. and so you will know about the Kaaba. Yes, the Kaaba. Yes. yes, yes, the black stone. Same the black stone. Yes, yes, that Muslims circumambulate. No doubt. Yes. And they, yes. and it's known as the house of God. It's, it's, yes, it is, yes. The house of God. So they circumambulate the, the, the Kaaba. Yes, built by Abraham, yes. And they touch, they, they, they have a kiswa, which is the, the, the cloth that covers the Kaaba. Is that correct? They do what, sorry, sir? They, I said there is a cloth that covers the Kaaba. Yes. That, no that I believe is called the kiswa. Um, I don't know the actual name. Yes. But yes, there is a cloth, yes. Okay, and they cover and they reach out and they touch it and they cry and they call. They say, here I am, Allah, in your august presence. Is that correct? Right. So is that where God is, in that black, in that black house? Okay, if I can give it... At the same time, they say God is in heaven. Are you prepared to accept that the, that the Kaaba is really, is simply symbolic of the house of God, the presence of God? Yeah, it's, it's a ritual, yes, no doubt. It's, it's symbolic, it's right? Is, is it symbolic or is God actually in... Why don't you give God the direct reverence? Hold on. No is way. is we, it we, we symbolic? Is it symbolic or is God literally in the car, inside the Kaaba? Symbolic. It's symbolic. Okay, so perhaps yes. you can understand when Africans look to the sun, which is far more powerful, that was made by the hands of God. The hands of human beings built the Kaaba. God built the sun, created the sun. We can't argue with that. And Africans okay. look up to the sun, manifesting the glory of Mwari Nyakusika, God the Creator, and we give praises to that manifestation of God. Can you appreciate that? Right, okay. That, that okay. the sun is symbolic of the, the sun, which is the source of life and light, is symbolic of the presence of God in the universe. Are you prepared to accept that? So are you saying to me, so first thing is that Muslims do not worship the Kaaba, and, we, and it, yes, it's symbolic, it is a ritual that we've been instructed to follow by the Prophet. We, we do not... My brother, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, but I, can give you I, 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 I did afford you the respect of not accusing Muslims of worshipping the Kaaba. I did yes. not say Muslims worship the Kaaba. I asked you some questions. Uh, and you as a Muslim, I'm not a Muslim. I'm, a tra I'm an African traditionalist and proud. You were the one who said that we Africans worship the sun. You did not ask me any questions. You make an assumption. And that's what the okay. Arabs did when they came into Africa. That's what the... Okay, I'd like the... to ask you some questions then, please, Brother Dan Cocker. Yeah, I would have to ask you a question. Is there any divinity in the sun? Is there any divinity in the sun? Does the sun hold any divinity... Of itself is the source of life and light it in the universe simple answer to your okay. question is yes because life and, is divine and, and and 
and that life and light is sourced is sourced in the spirit of the creator of the universe you say allah we have many names across the african continent for the one god and the many manifestations of god but one more thing i want to pursue with you if i may my brother because this, this is the exact point here. This is the actual difference between all of the religions. It's the exact point that we're dealing with. That what has divinity and what doesn't have divinity. The sun has, you said the sun is, is the, I'm thinking basically the creator of life. I say no. The sun is a creator. It's the creator. It's a source of life. It's a source of life. 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 Water is a source of life. Yes. Wind is a source of life. life. So life, life is divine. In the light. universe. Yes. In the universe. The source of light and life in the universe. That's where we source our energy. That's where we source our light. No, it's not the source of life. What is the source of life is the one that gave life, which is... Can I ask him a question? The the source of life and light. Yeah, that is drawn from the creator of the universe. I did say all All of that. Yes. Okay. Sorry, can, I, can I ask you a question? Um, how, in your opinion, does God manifest himself? Because you, you, we've um, talked about the Kaaba being... Can you hear me? Hello? I cannot hear my sister. Oh, you can't. She can't he can't hear me. About the sun. Actually, please. Hello, can you hear us? Uh, can you can you hear me? Can I say something to you? Yeah. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, this caller he's had he's had he's had he's had two goals. You hear what I'm saying to you? This is not to say that I, I'm just gonna I'm, I just want to get cut to the chase here. Yeah. To say that Islam has the only way to the Most High would be wrong. To say that Christianity has the only way to the Most High would be wrong. To say that Judaism has the only way to the Most High would be wrong. The, um, his, Her Rohan has touched on it a little earlier, earlier on. There are some people in the Amazon who have never ever practiced um, the ritual at heart who've never ever done Islam, never ever done Christianity, never ever done Judaism. Are you saying that those people in the Amazon jungle who follow their original indigenous way of life have no connection to the creator? Yeah? That's preposterous. That right That's yeah, preposterous. And how does God manifest himself in your opinion? By the words of our prophet, please. But, but, but. The, the people in the Amazon who no messenger has come to no, no, you know, they have this connection from, um, com- from, from, from this world as, as such. The people are able to use their brains, they're able to use their, their, their sight, their, their feel and their touch to know that it, what come about and the beautiful, you know, cohesion of what comes about in nature must be one God. Not three or four or a million. It must be one. Wrong. Yeah, but but, but, but they're not doing it. They're not doing it in an Islamic. They're not doing it in an Islamic way. That's my point. My point is, brother. My point is, brother. Yeah, you might be propagating an Islamic way. They are not doing it in an Islamic way. They are not doing it in a Christian way. They are not doing it in a Judaic way. They are not doing it in a Buddhist way. Don't you get that point? That's the point that we as the panel are making. They're not doing it the way that you're doing it. It doesn't mean that they are wrong. It doesn't mean that they do not have that connection to the one God that you're talking about. And that's the point we feel that you're not quite grasping. Here's what happens in that case. What happens in, in that it himself case, to him, to, in his opinion? In Amazon case is that no, no messenger has come to them to give them the message, to allow them the choice. No messenger has come to them. When they die, they meet the creator of this universe, like our belief is that we all will do. Then is their test. Their test is that God will come to them and will, and will show hellfire and will show paradise. God will say, I am your Lord. Jump into the hellfire. And if, if they jump into the hellfire, it will turn into paradise. It means, it means that in this life, if, if a messenger had come to them, they would have accepted. So we all get our test, brother. A messenger has come to all of us. We choose to, we choose to go, we choose to accept or deny. This is a choice. Mankind has a choice. Animals don't. This is their test because no messenger came to them. They will meet God, and God will say to them, I order you to do this. 
and if they do it, they will get the paradise. And if they don't, then then it's hell, and 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 and, and it's simple. And that's my last point. And I thank you for all your time. Thank you very much. Hold on a second. Has anybody yeah, ever has anybody ever come back from any hellfire to tell you that this is true? Well, well, this is yeah, let me finish, bruv. Let me finish because we listen to you. Yeah, yeah I, I has anybody ask has ask any ask has anybody ever came back from hell to tell you it exists? Has anybody ever come back from? Let me finish, bruv. From heaven to tell you it exists. Has any person from the Amazon jungle ever come back from any hellfire to tell you that? Everything that you just said, yeah, is totally unverifiable. It's not confirmable fact. It is your belief, which you well, accept as a fact. Sorry, it's not let, me finish, it's let, it's let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Sorry, one more, let one me more. finish. That is an Islamic belief, yeah, system. Just as you have a Christian belief system. Just as you have a Judaic belief system system you can look up the word belief you can accept something as a belief and be 100 percent wrong if is a big word in life bruv if my nose was a double if i did this if i done that yeah everything that you've spouted is philosophy it's not a fact it's not truth it's religious philosophy there is a difference between having blind belief and confirmable facts and the point still remains even if you're doing it in a islamic way it doesn't mean you're doing it the right way if you do it in a christian way it doesn't mean you're doing it the right way if you're doing it in a judaic way it doesn't mean that your way is the right way to think that is to have a very egotistical position on religion it's like human beings thinking that we are the only beings in existence in the entire universe when basic science dictates where there is water there is life yeah Scientists tell us they have found water on Mars, and you better know this. The Most High, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yahweh, Jehua, Jehovah, Jehovah, whatever you want to call him, he was dealing with science. That's why we deal with things like chemistry. That's why we deal with things like biology. That's why we deal with things like water. That's why we deal with things like blood. That's why we deal with things like the sun. Yeah? All of this is scientific confirmable facts. You have questions. We've now moved on to belief, okay? Have you seen the creator of this universe? Have you seen him? I'm in his image and like, I'm in his, I'm in his image and likeness. I only have to look in the mirror to see the creator. I only have to look at my mother to see the creator. I only have to look at the sun to see the creator. I only have to look at the wind to see, or, or feel the wind to sit, to feel the creator. I am in the image and the likeness of our creator. qualities of a creator in you? Is this what you're saying? What, what we're saying is Hold on a second, Ed. A cre the creator reproduces. I have reproduced children, yeah? That would be a creator, you, yeah? You At the end of the day, the yeah? I, if I have an idea and I manifest that idea, that is the physical manifestation of the creator, yeah? According to the Quran, the creator used congeal blood, yeah? That would be blood, my brother, yeah? That's scientific, yeah? And he also used water, which would be sperm, yeah? This creates life my brother at the end of the day there is physical confirmation of the most high and we see that through nature now this is not about your religion this is not about total religious philosophy this is how far we are removed from the concept of our original culture and traditions because of being westernized by islamic um, traditions because of being westernized by Christian traditions, because of being westernized by Judaic conditions. What about confirmable facts? Things that you can touch, taste, see, feel, hear, and think. That, that promoted monotheism. Okay? And, and, and I agree with you. There was a, a pharaoh. The, 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 whole, the whole matter here is that the prophets were sent to correct the, correct the people's belief. Prophets were sent to correct the people's belief. Because the devil has corrupted the people's beliefs. And this is what Islam is calling you to today, is to worship the one God, is to correct your belief. It's to say that do not seek from these created things. They, have, they cannot hear. They, cannot, they do not have power of themselves. It, it, there, there's a statue that is made out of wood. You know, wood decays. God, you know, go straight to God. This, this, that's the only message that, that, is, that is throughout here. 
Did the why, most why, hype his essence why within then, us? Why then, Tendai Moari, why then do you as Muslims engage in this elaborate ritual? You travel from all parts of the world mm -hmm. to go to Mecca to gather around the, the Kaaba. That is where your, your Hajj ritual culminates. But you have all other kinds of rituals that are part and parcel of your Hajj. Why do you engage in this elaborate ritual? Why don't you just go straight to God? Yes. Why do you have articles of faith in Islam? He's still not answering my question. My brother, why do you have articles of faith in Islam? Why don't you just bypass the articles of faith and just go straight to God? We have six strong articles of faith. And, 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 and those articles are, are built like a house. And again, it, you, we will to believe in them. And the, the articles of faith that I'm telling you about, and, and the monotheism connected to it, is, is it, when it sets in the heart, it sets like a rock. Thank you very much, Carla. We'd, we'd have to go for a commercial break briefly. www.voiceofafricaradio.com www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94 FM on your FM dial. It's straight talk. You're locked onto the biggest and you're locked onto the best. Just an announcement for straight talk the 24th of March 2013 next Sunday. Some audio clips straight from the motherland. We've got CEOs, Place Clote, doing some work in Africa. And we've got two clips, audio clips to be played next week. Um, one is the benefits of slavery. And topic two, or clip two, has got to do with adultery and polygamy. So that's clip one, to do with the benefits of slavery, and clip two, to do with adultery, adultery and polygamy. And that's on Straight Talk, the 24th of March, 2013, next Sunday. Keep it locked, and don't you touch that dial. I think we may have another caller on the The, 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 the phone lines are blazing. Hello, caller. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Yes, please go ahead with the contribution. Yeah, so I, I, I really give blessing to Mr. Diren, Kofi Ali, I love his call, um, um, Mr. Mandeka, uh, Her Majesty, and yourself, Kofi. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, that was, um, that was an excellent call, but, and, um, I will just, I'm going to be brief. I'm going to pick up two or three points, very briefly. I, when I was living in New York, there was a program called Like It Is, ABC, and Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark used to come in there, and he had a, a mother, father, child, totally black. And I was watching the new Pope, and behind, he saw, there was a black Madonna, a black mother, a black father, and a child. And Dr. Clark, you know, I was, I was uh, preparing at the time to, to do a, a master at Howard, in the African Studies Department. And he said, hey, man, there's no such thing as heaven and hell. That's a recent modern European concept. In our African tradition, we just have to know the difference between right and wrong. And, and we're we going back to, for example, Azar Aset, Nehru. And how, for example, his brother, his half brother, Set, where he said where the word Satan comes from, for example. And and I'm gonna be brief. And for example, if you study, for example, Kemet with the Memphis, you know, ancient Egypt and the, the capital Memphis, and and if you look at the design of ancient Egypt, the same design of Washington D.C. You have the the burying whatever and the west side, and the, we have the political, and you have the, the rising of the sun in the east, as Mr. Mandeko was talking about, the, the symbolic thing, and it's this kind of conversation, I can't really get to more, but I just want to get, it was excellent, uh, the, 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 the strategic and excellent response to that gentleman, because, you know, as, as a, like Marcus Garvey, you know, one, as a race, and this is what his sister was saying, we, we we have to people who who like I was listening to Muta Baruko now even yesterday talking about J. A. Rogers, and he spoke about when he met um um Ethiopia the the empire. He said he met the the perfect. That's showing how we we 
you know, he said, when we were in school, when I was like in Jamaica going to school, the lady was talking about Martin Luther King. I didn't realize who Martin Luther King till I, I was studying to went to university in America, and 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 we don't, you know, when I was at school, they're teaching you about this guy would tell you about some some high ships in. They teach you about Napoleon, you know, teaching you European history. They don't even today. Young children, I'm trying to be a mentor to a lot of young boys, 13, 14. They just came kicked out of school. They don't even, they don't teach. We don't, and it's not, I can't say they. We at the, 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 the stage now where we got to stop using excuses. We, we need to bring up the term like people keep mentioning the Jews in, 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 in Stanford and all that. We need to take, to get control of the education of our future generation, you know? I just want to say that. I, I, I really enjoy the program and have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much, Carla, and thank you very much for your message, thank, your thank words. You. That was a beautiful, beautiful call, Kofi. Yeah, I'd like to pick up all the Facebook crew as well because it seems like this this program is all over Facebook at the moment at this yes. present time as well. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, no, you've got to listen to Voice of Africa 94 FM. So um, big up to all the crew. We did tell you it was going to be a hot program from part <laughs> one. Yeah, I, I just wanted to go back to um, a deal. I don't know if you think we was having a goal, you know, but... I, if you listen to his reasoning, which he, we, we define in the studio as a lack of reasoning, as the last caller just said, these modern religious concepts, yeah, when you take it back to ancient Egypt, yeah, I, I said to Adil in the first program, yeah, I said to him, I explained to him, yeah, the Quran tells you in Surah chapter 2, yeah, you look in Surah, Surah chapter 2, it tells you to follow the religion of Abraham. As he mentioned, the Kaaba was built by Abraham, who the Muslims call Ibrahim and his son Ishmael, okay? The very word Kaaba, yeah? Type it into any Google search engine. You know what it will take you back to? Yeah? An ancient Egyptian concept of the soul. That's in any generic encyclopedia. You go into Wikipedia, you go into Britannia, yeah? It will tell you the Kaaba, yeah? It is a definition of ancient Africa coming out of ancient Sudan, coming up from the Ayuta, who became your tribe of Yehuda, and it defined Ka, soul, ba, and spirit. That's what it defines. So it shows you that the principle that Islam is following is an ancient African principle. Henceforth, why I said Islam came out of ancient African traditions, because very, the very first the, the very fact that you've got Muslims making a pilgrimage to Hajj to worship, yes they do worship a ritual in which they worship a black stone called the Kaaba. That word is not Arabic. It's not a Semitic language. It takes you back into ancient Egypt. Don't believe what I'm telling you. We're in the information age, like I says. Type Ka, K-A, Ba into any search engine and it will take you back to ancient Egyptian religion for the soul and the spirit which is Africa yeah simple these things are confirmable yeah Darren thank you very much I believe we may have another call on the line the phone lines are blazing hello Carla hello is that me yes that's you greetings greetings my name is Shakara calling from East London Greetings, yeah. greetings, yeah. Shakara, yeah. greetings. Um, I, I just wanted to say, but first of all, this is a fantastic show, um, and I've, I've enjoyed listening to it. Give, um, give thanks to all your guests in the studio. Um, yeah, first and foremost, I wanted to say that, um, uh, kind of touching on the point that, um, Nigella made earlier, I think we do African spirituality a grave disservice in a number of different ways. And one of the main ways that we do it a disservice is that we only speak about it, um, when we're trying to qualify it with, um, you know, European traditions. I think there was a show um, about a year ago regarding African spirituality, say libation, and whether, you know, it's, it, it's compatible with the Bible and them, them kind of things there. And I, I would like to suggest that at some point on Voice Africa Radio, there should be a show that just focuses on African spirituality. So you can draw, um, you know, they, they, we've got uh, many examples of African spirituality throughout the length and breadth of the African continent. And if we have a show where we just draw on a few of those people, practitioners, or a few of those traditions, and bring them together, you know what I'm saying, in order to just, you know, speak and educate um, African people about our old traditions. Um, the question that we're asking today is a very, very um, important one, um, and, and one that is, is very interestingly worded in terms of whether 
African spirituality is is, is compatible with, with with you know modern religions, and I, and I think if we're, if we're looking at this this idea of mod, what what is modern, yeah, um, and what is you know this development in society and so on and so forth, I think um, a point was made earlier in terms of the importance of people people that follow African tradition, um, you know, be, uh, being able to promote. Um, the value of African tradition, and I think one of the ways in which we can do that is make it a tool of nation building. See, we are, we come from uh, traditions that were not just uh, what's the word spiritual in the sense that our spiritual traditions were the basis of nations and civilization. So they had a very practical use. Yeah, and what has happened is that we have been um, African tradition has been marginalised to superstition and a few cultural practices. You know, um, you pour some water here. You know, you drink this. You, you you, you, you know, you, you, you say these words, yeah? What we, what, what we need to do is make it a part of our education system, a part of our development. So we need to teach, um, you know, our, we need to teach science, uh, math, um, you know, uh, philosophy, you know what I'm saying, using our own languages um, pertaining to our traditions as a way to educate. Therefore, we use it as a nation-building tool. Um, and that, 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 that's, that's what I want to say. The last thing I want to say is, is around this concept of worship, because what happens is that people that come from religions can only qualify um, their, their, you know, what is right and wrong according to God by, via a book. Yeah, Books are written by men. Yeah, God doesn't write books. Yeah, um, and and th- th- so in in the sense that in African tradition, it, it would be considered blasphemous, yeah, to ignore uh, the creation of the Creator, i.e., what we call Mother Nature, and then um, put a book over uh, as the authority, you know, um, for our human development in terms of what God is supposed to represent. This would be considered blasphemous because we have totally ignored that which the Creator created and put a book that was written by us, yeah, by human beings, yeah, um, as the complete author and nothing that God said that is outside, sorry, that is outside of this book is considered valid or, or valued, yeah. But when we talk about worship, and really and truly, in the, uh, according to the dictionary, yeah, all that worship means is great honor and respect. Yeah, great love and admiration or adoration. That's what that's what it means. Yeah, <laughs> literally speaking. So you know the connotation is that we could only worship the, the, the God because we put it in a religious context. But we can give great honor and adoration to anything. I give my father is in the studio. Yeah, I give great honor and respect to my father. Do you know what I'm saying? Is, is, is that blasphemous to God that I give great honor and respect to my father? No, it is not. You know what I mean? So we, we need to define all, all of these terms. But I, like I said, I would like to see a show where on Voice Africa Radio where we're just able to talk about African spirituality and educate each other about African spirituality. Thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, briefly. Let me say something about what he said, actually. Uh, I want to state categorically that the position that we, I, especially I take as far as using the Bible and using it to illustrate why our traditions have to be uh, respected is because most of the people who have a problem with African traditions, let's face it, are Christians or religious um, or religions. So from my perspective, I wasn't brought up with uh, uh, the Quran as my religious tradition. Mm-hmm. I, I was brought up with the Bible. Therefore, it is what I know. And when Christians come up to me and say, well, God says this. I don't have any choice but to say, actually, go back in the Bible and read for yourself. Because if you go to court and you, you need to, you have to go to the law books to fight your, your case. By the same reasoning, if someone brings the Bible to me, uh, as a tool to, to, uh, invalidate my culture, I will use the same Bible to prove them wrong. Whereas I believe strongly that there is nothing wrong with my culture. So this is why I tend to use the Bible uh, because people don't read the book. Actually, a, a lot of what is said. Isn't it? Can I can I say, Kofi? They don't yeah, read it at yeah. All. I've been privileged enough with love with, with with religion. You're taking a short walk walk on a long path. Yeah. What do we mean when you're taking a short walk on a long path? Yeah. I was brought up in a Christian house, as, as I explained on the last program, was an altar boy, yeah, etc, etc, etc. Yet, I'm also aware, yeah, of, from uh, our education, yeah, that 
Christians don't have all the answers. Mm. Muslims don't have all the That's answers. Right. Jews don't have all the answers. Hindus don't have all the answers. Buddhists, say, you have to read and study everybody's book. Because yes. this is what I'm saying. It's very egotistical of any religion to feel that they have the divine right to interpret the most high. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? It's yeah, a very egotistical uh, fool. Brother Leader, no, do come in. Yeah, ten nine more. Yeah, give thanks and praises uh, for the callers, Texas. callers, and and I mean the last caller is indeed my son, so I'm I'm very proud to. <laughs> well, that's why his father is in the studio. Oh, he was referring to me on this. Um, one of these other brothers is is really his father. No, 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 you're, you're, never you're, know. Know. you're the creator. We're you're the creator. <laughs> But, um, We're encouraged but, but, right but, now. For the last 27 years, I've been thinking I'm his father. So I, I assume it was your first yeah, You're the creator of that one. But uh, I want to say that the, the 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 points that you made just now, mm. um, Her Royal Highness, is, is, is not um, opposed to anything that Brother Shakara said mm. earlier on, mm. uh, because I think the two processes are very, very important. What you uh, explained just now is vitally important. You have to be able to use the same holy book yeah. that our brothers and sisters, whether it's the Quran or the... Uh, That's right. The, the, Bible. the, the Bible. The Bible, the Upanishads or of the, the Hindus, yeah, yeah, that, the Bhagavad Gita, etc. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Whether, whatever it is <laughs> that they f use as their spiritual frame of reference yes. to send them back into it to unravel their un-African and anti-African thinking. Absolutely. You know, earlier on we talked about Joy Leary post-traumatic sy yeah. uh, syndrome concept and we talked about uh, Stockholm Syndrome that uh -huh. we're suffering from as a result of being enslaved and conquered. Uh, b before Joy Leary, we had Franz Fanon who talked about the psychopathology, the psychopathology <laughs> of colonization. Mm. We don't factor that in enough. What damage has been done That's psychologically right. Mm -hmm. and emotionally mm -hmm. to African people that we have transmitted transgenerationally mm -hmm. that make us and, and when Fanon taught with in Fanon's analysis he talks about the psychopathology of colonization and one of the symptoms being self alienation mm. self alienation and this kind of uh, wrapping our souls around not just alien religious concepts you know but alien religious concepts that were imposed on African people to conquer and control African people is a sickness. Mm. It has to be seen and understood as a sickness. If you listen to the brother earlier on, and I'm not being disrespectful, Adil, I think he's saying, yeah, 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 yeah. love the brother, in, and, and the brother exudes a very beautiful spirit. Mm. Yeah? But I, f I, I found that our brother was not hearing us. Yes. No. I found that my brother wasn't able to, to reason. Mm. What he did was regurgitate. Well, his taught. belief system yeah. and he regurgitated it well but he he was so closed he was so locked that's what i would say he, 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 he wasn't thinking. prepared to open his that mind he was not he, he, he was not capable of even hearing because at the point at which he condemned us uh allegedly praying to the sun and the moon <laughs> and we brought him back to the, the fact that yeah. in his religion mm. there is a pilgrimage that brings them to an object called the Kaaba yeah. which means the black stone mm. which came with where the word Kaaba came from ancient Africa this yeah. is what we say yeah no, no the sun <laughs> you can the sun you can be anywhere in the world yeah. and, and you, you get see sun. the yeah. sun yeah. Yeah? yeah you have to travel to Mecca yeah to, to this Kaaba. particular point to see the Kaaba the house of God as they define it mm -hmm. in the religion yeah. A yeah. physical entity. The point at a, a physical, physical entity. Was okay. Made yeah. by you. Mind, not a spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> that is said to be the hands of God. And when we asked him, we asked him. Now I, I mm. tried not to disrespect my brother by making any assumptions. He was very assumptions. respectful. Actually. Yes, mm -hmm. I asked him. He, I, I said I, I asked him to confirm that in the in, in the Islamic teachings, the Kaaba is the house of God. Mm. Yes. I asked him whether this was symbolic mm -hmm. or literal. Is God actually inside <laughs> that stone structure? Right. Or is it symbolic? The brother said it's symbolic. symbolic. At that point, our brother, something should click in how, our brother's how mind. How can you it condemn happen. someone? How can it you condemn happen? Africa for having the same we, symbolism, we metaphors, algorithm? The <laughs> that we are closer to God. Yes. Whatever criticism you may make of the African, yeah. we're closer to God yeah. by 
reverencing forces of nature mm -hmm. made living. by the hands of God living we're, we're living and that's creation. the heart and soul of African spirituality yeah. that to the African God is the totality of the universe Absolutely. manifested in all that is Absolutely. so God is in me God is in you yes. God is in the exactly. earth God is in the heaven God is in the trees in the sun and, in and the water the glory of God exactly. when, when, when the African picks the fruit from the tree mm -hmm. God's the thing. African is receiving right. food from the hands of God. And he says God yeah. lives here. So we have to reverence. We have to reverence the mm -hmm. tree before we pick the fruits. Not the fool of an Arab and the fool of a European. Come to Africa and see us reverencing the tree. Because that's where we access our food. You see. So we see the presence of God in that tree. And so... We reverence the tree and then we pick the fruit. And that fool says we're worshipping the tree. Mm -hmm. As if the African don't know that the tree has a root that is in the earth. That is connected to all of the forces of the universe. Absolutely. As if we don't understand that. As if we don't know that as African people. And they, they want to confine our spiritual thinking to a book. Mm. To a book. I don't care how many pages the book has. You can't exhaust the meaning and the glory and the majesty of the creator of the universe in any one book. That's and right. Brother Pandaka, that. That, to, 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 <laughs> that in to, itself could yeah. be described as an act, an act of blasphemy. Absolutely. Come in, come in, and, and, to, and to confirm what you're saying, if we, if we think like that, then we, we have to then accept that after the book was written, God stopped speaking. Absolutely. He stopped speaking. Absolutely. Because this, these are his only words. Now, how does that make sense yeah. to, to you, you and know I know what? As and, a human and, being? And, and it's a serious, sorry, it's a, it's a serious but, sickness we have because it's not just the brother Adil, as I said, as I said, um, some Jehovah Witnesses knocked my door the other day and that was the question I asked and the woman, yeah, tried to say to me that all of what we got to find out from God is just in our Bible. And, and he stopped that. speaking. He stopped speaking. <laughs> the Quran I don't itself. There's a, there's a chapter in Come the Quran. Come on now, man. A surah in the Quran itself. And I'm paraphrasing now. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I can't remember the word for it. It says something like, if all the trees in the, the, uh, on the planet were pens, and all of the water of the universe uh, was ink, mm. It could not exhaust the word of God. There you go. Beautiful words. Not surprisingly, because there was an African by the name of um, Azra Bilal Ibn Rahab, mm -hmm. known as um, Bilal, who was one of the uh, history, says he was one of the authors of the Bible. But of course, the religion says <laughs> it was the, the Bible came straight from God and was revealed to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to Mo Prophet, Moses. Mo Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the Quran, you mean? The Quran. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, 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 what did I say? You said the, 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 the Bible. Bible. No, the Quran, yeah. I mean. The Quran. Quran. Sorry. Ten nine one. Bearing in mind that the Quran yeah. also tells the Prophet Muhammad, if he's in doubt, is to go back to the religious books that were written before, which would be the Injil, the Book of Revelation, or the Book of Salvation, and also to the Old Testament, the Book of the Law, of the Commandments. As Yeshua Isa said, I came to fulfill the law, not to change anything. www.voiceofafricaradio.com. I've got a couple of texts messages here let me just read them quickly um this text says god put sun and trees and water for our benefit god doesn't need these things and we need it <laughs> <laughs> that, that's our point we need it god put it there for our benefit and so we you know if 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 my brother brings me something from my mother or my father I thank the brother for bringing it from my mother and my father. That's correct. You, you understand? It came from my mother and my father, mm -hmm. but the brother brought it to me. We got the food from the tree, and so we reverence the tree because the tree to us symbolically, just as all the Kaaba is symbolically the house of God, the tree to the African is symbolically the hand of God. What makes the Arab right mm -hmm. and the African wrong? wrong. And, and our brother... Yeah. Let me just finish the sentence, mm. if I may insist. My brother Duran um, said uh, earlier on about the, the meaning of the word Kaaba, mm. the etymological root. root. The mm. African ancestor of Kemet talked about the nine parts of the soul. Break and, it down. And the word Kaaba, K-A-A-B-A, -A, incorporates three of the nine parts of the soul. The That's Ka, right. the Ab, and the Ba. The Ab is 
the uh, the heart soul. Mm. It is that which is weighed against the feather of my act in ancient African tradition That's when we correct, come before the Sar, the, the, the Lord of Eternity and the Judge of the Break Dead. We are down. the concept in ancient <laughs> Africa, the Nile along the Nile Valley, long before, long before Christianity and Islam. And the concept of heaven. Just to just, just touch on what, what the brother's saying, the concept of heaven takes you to Orion. When they translated that word or from the Greek Uranus, it takes you back to Orion, the star constellation which manifests as that deity Asar or Asaru. Okay? And these things are confirmable facts. www.voiceofafricaradio.com 94FM on your dial. We promise it's going to be hot. And it really has been hot. A couple of text messages. This one says, Hi, the African religion is one of the best and is losing its value because most of the information is not documented for the other generations to read like the Bible is. Yeah, that's Thank a you very failure. much. It's from Frank. And let's see. I think we have another one. Hi, I love your show. Keep up with the good work. I think Western Christianized, Christianization to some degree isn't compatible and has also caused detri detrimental effects on cultural customs, i.e. the traditional customs of, of the marriage and wedding. How can young people uh, learn about the African traditions, he asks. Can you recommend any good places to read on African history? This is from Linda. Thanks very much, Linda. Can any of you recommend any books or any bits that Linda can read in terms of African traditions, customs, practices, or anywhere where she could? Okay. I would, well, I would tell you, um, there's a great site. It's called um, thejourneyhomegroup.com. All right, the journeyhomegroup.com. All right, and there's a couple of books I'm reading. It's, one is Sailor, which tells you about the Atonis prayer. And when you're talking about that God concept or that monotheistic concept, monotheistic religion, as you hear with Islam Kaaba, yeah, it came out of ancient Egypt. Okay, mm -hmm. now when we're talking about things like the original tribes of Israel, it wasn't just Israel, it was Ishmael, it was the Midianites, as I said to you earlier, the Hadendawa, the Ashante, the Ebo, the Yoruba, the Lemba, um, the president, the current president of South Africa, his tribe, the Zulu tribe, he has quite openly said Christianity has ruined Africa, yeah? Desmond Bishop Tutu, as yes. was made um, by Her Royal Highness earlier, she said earlier on, said, they gave us the Bible, we closed our eyes, when we opened our eyes, we had the Bible, and they took the land, the resources, etc., 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 yeah? To say that our... Our, our way of life is not documented is not true. There's a difference between not documented and you're not being made aware. As once again, Her Royal Highness talked about, she talked about public relations. The public relations company that I'm a part of is called Amelu Arts. What's our job? Our job through workshops, through seminars, through making you aware of certain websites, through some of the information that we're dropping on you today is to public relate to our race, our people, exactly what our way of life, our culture, our ancient African traditions are and how they can be found and they're still alive in this day. By very virtue of the fact Her Royal Highness is here, she's a living manifestation of her ancient traditions culture. Brother um, Bandaka. Bandaka, he is a living entity, a living representation of his culture, his spirituality, of African traditions. Even though I may carry our westernized name, and I told you earlier on we have African names, I'm a living example, a living, living entity, a living representation of our ancient African cultures, traditions, and ways of life. And this is what we're trying to instill within you, and it's up to our African Caribbean stations, be they radio, be they TV, it's up to our media now to make sure that we're turning the hearts and minds of our children back to our original culture cultures and way of life. Let me explain it to you like that. I'm just going to say this to before Two we seconds. go away. I just want to explain it to you like this. We like to associate with what we see as being successful and it goes back to what Brother Mandaka said earlier on about the Red Nose Day. When we look at the Red Nose Day, it associates, or when we look at any of these charities that come on TV, it makes an association with Africa that doesn't make it look successful. Yet, when we see European culture, when we see the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church, the wealth of the Jehovah Witnesses, when we see the 
wealth of the oil of Arab Islam, when we see the wealth of the Chinese Buddhists, we as um, human beings naturally want to be associated with that success and achievement in order for us, our race, our children to be associated with our success and achievement, we have to see ourselves as successful, we have to see the manifestations of our great kingdoms we have to make our children know about the fact that all of these modern so called successful looking religions actually came out of the success and the creation of ancient African www.voiceofafricaradio.com 94FM on your dial, you Locked onto the biggest, and you're locked onto the best. It's Straight Talk, 17th March, 2013. I've got a couple more text messages here. This one is from Tunde, who says traditional religions are very compatible with the so-called modern religions, but actually, no, the so with the so-called modern, but actually pseudo superficial religions. The true bedrock and template of modern religions are the traditional and ancestral faiths and worships. That's Tunde from. South East How can it be London. With pseudo? Well, that's that's a text message. <laughs> I, that that seems like an oxymoron. Well, no, there are there are. Uh, another, another message says, please, would you text me Darren's full name, contact address? Yeah, Darren will give you his contact address and website address at the tail end of the show. And another person says. Uh, I love your show. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I think we've read this one as well. www.voiceofafricaradio.com Brother Leader, I'll come over to you with one question. Now, if we're saying that African traditional religion and these so-called modern religions are basically effectively worshipping one so-called God, then surely they both they should be compatible. Tenamuari. Tenamuari. Conceptually, mm -hmm. in that in that in that sense, okay. that they both claim to worship the one God, but there in its in 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 that assertion in itself, and in their differing definitions of that one God, we see incompatibility, because the Christians will say the only way to God is through Jesus Christ, and the Muslims will say that Allah. Is the, is the only true God. Yeah. So you have, an, a, a, you have conflict right there and then. That, that's not compatible. Mm -hmm. yeah? So the, the broad concept of monotheism mm. may be compatible, but how they express that monotheism and how they define mm. and they propagate their definition of God creates yeah. conflict. Absolutely. And that's why these two religious forces have, have forever been at war with each other. And then, more importantly, we have to examine its impact on Africa and African people. Mm. The Christians look at the African in our natural environment, practicing our natural traditions, and call us pagan mm. and heathen mm -hmm. and idolatrous and all sorts of ugly names they call us, simply by being ourselves yes. as Africans. The Muslims uh, call us uh, infidels, yes, um, kafirs, you know, j just by being ourselves, yes. So... Can that ever be compatible? Mm -hmm. if, we are, if we are Africans who are proud of who we are, can that ever be compatible? But let me share an anecdote with you very quickly. Uh, we all know, uh, well, we should know about the Africania movement in, uh, in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And I don't want to share with brothers and sisters how, how that uh, came about. Mm -hmm. uh, a priest, a, an, an African who was in the Catholic, Catholic Church, who was a Catholic yeah. priest, yeah and who had become a part of the Rawlins government and was part of the ministry of, I think it's re religion and culture. Yeah. Yeah? Went to an international, uh, uh, an international religious um, seminar. Mm. And when he went there, he observed that there were Christians from Europe, uh, Muslims, Arab Muslims, European Christians there. There were Hindus from India, Sikhs from India. There were uh, Shintoists from, uh, from Japan, uh, Taoists from China, and Confucianists from China. And he observed that in their adherence to a religion and their definition of their religion, it was grounded in their culture, grounded in their tradition, expressed through their language, mm -hmm. 
expressed through their names. They all had their own indigenous names. They all had their own indigenous language. They all had their, their, their religion. Uh, their, their gods were projected in their own image. And he realized that the Africans who were there, including himself, were tagged on to Christianity, to Christianity Islam, Islam yeah. Buddhism, and all of these other religions. There was no representation of an African, an indigenous African spiritual uh, system. And all of the Africans who were there were tagged on to somebody else's religious system. And that blew his mind. That blew his mind and, he, and it, 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 it changed his thinking. And he came back to Ghana and started laying the foundation for establishing what he called the African mission. mission. And the idea was to merge all the spiritual systems across the African continent into a single expression <laughs> of African spirituality, which was a powerful thing. And he became yeah. the first spiritual leader of the African mission. Yeah. Um, a, a, a Sofo Combo, Kwame Nadamwa. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Powerful, powerful concept. But it took something like that. But fortunately, his Uchat which is the inner eye, the third mm -hmm. eye, or what mm -hmm. we call in, in science the pineal gland. Yeah. His Uchat, his African third eye, was opened enough to connect with, with, with this uh, paradox mm -hmm. that was unfolding in front of him, where everybody else's expression of their religion was consistent with their culture, was consistent with their language, mm -hmm. was consistent with their image of God, which was in their... Which was, in oh, their own lightning, which, was, which was in their own light, which was my original point in the beginning. Which what are you worshiping? Thing. How, in, in, as somebody put on Facebook, in, in Islam, the God is in their image and their likeness. In Buddhism, the God is in their image and their likeness. In Hinduism, the God is in their image and their likeness. In Christianity, where most of our people are, the God is in whose image and whose likeness. Really and truly African people, you're doing everybody else's stuff when everybody else's stuff came from our original foundation. www.voiceofafricaradio.com um, You're locked into the big one. It's 94FM. I've got a text message here from Linda saying, could our panelists please repeat the recommendations that is the books or the library or any kind of literature that they may find useful. I think we have another caller on the line. We'll take the caller briefly. Hello, caller. Hello. Yeah, Hello, caller. Uh, yeah, please go uh, ahead. A, a contributor wanted uh, someone to suggest a book for her to read. Yes. Yes. And uh, the first book that I would like to recommend is called The African Condition. The African Condition. Yeah, by Professor Al Mazuri. Professor Ali Mazuri, yes. Yeah, Al Mazuri. And the second one is called Topics in West African History. Okay, she's listening, so I'm sure she's taking down her, the notes. Okay, thank you very much for your call, uh, call up. I've got another, uh, text message, uh, brother leader. This says, hi, we have to take great lengths to completely wipe them from Africa and make sure our new generation are not brainwashed by this. As long as these religions are in Africa, there is no hope for us. And if war is a necessity, then so be it. This is Segun from Croydon, and he's the author of uh, Black Egyptians. I think that's some kind of literature for Linda, if Linda's listening. I think we have another text somewhere. Uh, God, yeah, I think we've read this one. Uh, I think and that's another text. Yeah, I think we've read this one as well www.voiceofafricaradio.com, um, 94FM, time check, it's about 20 minutes at the top of the hour, 2 o'clock, so we would be, we'll be running up uh, very shortly, uh, basically just to ask one or two questions, uh, I'll ask all my panelists. Now we have a couple of book titles here. Yes, please go on. L Linda, if you're listening, Brother Leader has got some titles, so do get your pen ready. 
Now, Tendai Mwari, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if some of these books are still in print because yeah. I'm a you know I'm an old hat. I've been at this for a long time, <laughs> thirty years, and I bought this book some twenty odd years ago. It's called um, Facing Mount Kenya by Jomo Kenyatta, and it, it it's about Kikuyu tradition. Yeah, yeah, because Jomo Kenyatta was from the Kikuyu tradition. Yeah. Okay. Now I've been advised by um, other Kikuyus that it's not necessarily pure, but it's a very useful book to read to okay. help us to begin to understand one aspect of African tradition. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a book here called Anthem of the Decades by um, Mazisi Kunene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a, Zulu, a Zulu epic dedicated to the women of Africa. It's mm -hmm. a very good, very interesting book um, to read. I, somehow I feel this book is out of print. Okay. I bought this book some thir nearly 30 years ago. Okay. But there's a piece in it, if I get the chance, yeah. there's a piece in it I would re very much like to read. Um, so brothers and sisters will understand the high culture and deep thought mm. that comes out of African philosophy and African tradition. Can I just, yeah. I just as I say um, to, to, to Linda, yeah, there's a couple of books. These are not ancient. These are brand spanking news. I, I gave you a website, Journey Home Group. There's another one called... The Holy Coptic Church, yeah, dot org. Okay, there's two books I'm currently reading, which are great books, and three, in fact, the other one I didn't bring in. Yeah, mm -hmm. one is the original books of the Bible. Yeah, original books of the Bible, parchment one. It will be 19 parchments. Yeah, it's a bit that book particular one is a bit pricey. Henceforth, we don't really um, bring it around. Um, I'm re reading one at the moment called the Original Twelve Tribes of the Bible. Yeah, where it explains to about the the groups of tribes that came through your scriptures yeah what you know is reuben judah ben the tribes where they came from which i mentioned earlier on the Igbo, the Eden, Hadendawa, the danakio the ashante the zulu the kikuyu who has just been mentioned the um the lemba yeah how these kohens how our way of life was transplanted by europeans yeah another one is um, our prayer book on supplication, yeah, which is called Selah, all right, and you hear that word Selah in Psalms, yeah, but people don't realize that word Selah means true prayer and supplication, where when, when we gave reverence, yeah, where, 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 the, where you see the Muslims prostrating, yeah, and your Jews prostrating, this is an African tradition, yeah, and the Selah explains to you, yeah, about our tonal language, about the importance of calling on our ancestors, not calling on things in the name of Jesus, because Jesus himself said in Matthew 6 9, Our Father, he said, Don't call, he didn't say call my name, he said, Call our Father who art in heaven, yeah, but we know it as our Heavenly Mother and our Heavenly Father, because as we says, we did the female principle as well. But I just want to turn you on to those books, the books. Uh, are called the original 12 tribe of the scriptures the sailor and also the original books of the bible part one or parchment one yeah and you can check out the website journey home group or the holy coptic church yeah dot org dot uk or dot uk dot org yeah Ten yeah. uh yes i'll just give give one more there are other books i can't recall yeah. the, the full title and, okay. and so on at the moment but these are the ones i've got in front of me uh this one is called the uh, selections from the Hosea. The sacred wisdom of ancient Egypt. And this will sort of connect us with, give us a sense of some of the ancient texts, spiritual texts that we had in the, uh, in the African continent, on the African continent. Not necessarily in any one book, um, but we had sacred writings. Um, not just in ancient Kemet, by the way, but in mm -hmm. other parts of Africa. There's an, uh, there's, the Akans had their own, their own, um, script. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, uh, what we call the uh, Adinkra symbols are not just symbols. Yeah. You know, they, they are they are symbol symbols of profound philosophical concepts mm -hmm. that were part and parcel of our spiritual um, teachings mm -hmm. uh, and, and training from ancient times to the present. www.voiceofafricaradio.com, 94FM on your dial. It's just about a quarter to two o'clock. I've got a text message from... Kwame E15, he says, Greetings, the voice of Africa family. I totally agree that it is about time that Africans should decide our own realities, whether it is spiritually, socially, politically, economically, and justly. Africans are so confused upside down because we buy too much into the myths of Europeans and Arabs thoughtlessly and immorally. What is good for Europeans and Arabs does not mean it is healthy 
from Africans. That's from Kwame. And thanks for your text message. His, uh, Her Royal Highness, you had some... Sophie, yes. I wanted to make this point, which I think is very, very important. Mm-hmm. In re- the, I think the reason why we need to go back to our roots and our culture and our, our, our way of understanding God, as I put it, is because there is a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt attached to religion. So you have people who... Uh, if, if, if you don't do this, this will happen to you, that will happen to you, that will happen to you. And when people begin to understand that God actually doesn't work that way, I think it removes a lot of the guilt which is used as a tool of indoctrination anyway from, from, from their minds. And I think it's then that we begin as a people to grow uh, uh, and learn. I was referring to the Tower of Babel concept, concept earlier, and I want to touch that on that uh, briefly. The reason I mention that as uh, total rubbish is, uh, it's the same, it's the same principle. Look, God created, in the Bible you're told that Adam and Eve were the first people, and we're told that his son ran uh, out of the, their home and married someone on the way. And I asked the question, but where did this woman come from? Now the reason I say that is, it tells you straight away that this is what I mean by people not understanding God. It tells you straight away that People, other people must have been created um, when, if we believe that Adam and Eve were the first. How did the land of say, not It didn't say about. they were the only, mm-hmm. it said they were the first. So if you believe that even, then you have to know that there were other people in existence in the world across um in different parts of the world. So that when it's being tried, the whole idea of language, you know, and, and, and cultural differences mm-hmm. uh, are being, tra- uh, tr- tr- um, are being uh, translated to be uh, p- a group of people building a tower and suddenly something happened and they couldn't understand each yeah. other. To me, it's a total nonsense, nonsense because you only have to, for Christians, and I always say Christians because this is what I keep, get coming to me all the time, go and read the Bible. And if someone is teaching you something that is wrong, use the same book that they're using. Because a lot of the things that they're saying is highly contradictory to what is actually written in that book. Mm. You know, and this is an illustration. Another thing I wanted to say is the idea of indoctrination of us as a people. On the way here, I was having a conversation with the gentleman who, um, who brought me. And, uh, you know, and his position was, he was talking about the chiefs and queen mothers yeah. in this country. And his position was, oh, some of them are too regal in their appearance okay. and they shouldn't be. And I, was, I asked him the question, why shouldn't they be? And he says, well, I think it's wrong. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to raise the question, why should they be so regal and have gold, etc." And I said, but don't you understand that if you're in the UK singing this from the same hymn sheet as I would expect a person, uh, an indigenous UK person to be singing from. Don't you realize you're destroying your culture? Why should I, as a, 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 a royal, not look royal in my appearance if I were to sit in state somewhere? You know, do I, do I necessarily, and this is pro- probably something that we need to discuss, do I necessarily need to look like a pauper? You're propagating the same idea that. I should somehow conform to what somebody thinks I should be like to be an African royal because an African royal really in the scheme of things is not that important. Do you understand me? And then the last anecdote I have, I keep mentioning this, is my son Nana going to school in one of the uh, you know top schools in the country. Yeah. The first thing he got told when he got there, his name is Nana, everybody calls him that, is uh, Nana in German means grandmother and the the boy started laughing. So he was uh, disturbed for a bit. And then he turned around and said, actually, Nana in my language means chief. Yeah. And it means I'm royalty. Yeah. And he came home fuming. Yeah. you know, And he was adamant that nobody was going to change his name in the register. It's going to stay Nana. And so he stayed. And this is the way we are indoctrinated to be. To be uh, we as Africans are very apologetic about who we are. Brother Bandaka said something earlier. We, we apologize for being Africans. Mm-hmm. We don't ask. Where they, you go to a, a seminar a religious seminar and Africans are the only ones who are so apologetic that they're tagged onto something else mm. and I think that mentality has to stop www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94FM on your dial it's just about 10 minutes at the top of the hour 2 o'clock it's straight talk it's been hot it's been sizzling the calls the texts 
Um, probably, if you're listening, Angela, probably another part three because <laughs> the calls and texts. I've just been deleting because the the phone can't even take so many more messages. I've have, I've actually had to delete lots and lots and lots of text messages because the the phones have just been blazing. A question that I'm going to ask by the by the leader and 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 all all my panelists is now. We, we we all admit that lots of Africans gravitate towards these so-called modern religions. How come you don't have non-Africans gravitating towards African traditional religion? You do. Well, well you do. Uh, can I just say, from, mm-hmm. an, from an academic perspective, mm-hmm. yeah, you do. What what we find, what we yes. what, what we're not made aware of, yeah, what we're not made aware of, anything that the European needs to find out. They will submerge themselves in our way of life, our cultures, for 10, 15, 20, and 25 years. If you take it from an economic, from a traveling perspective right about now, if you go on any plane, yeah, go into uh, Dar es Salaam, go into um, Lagos, go into Nairobi, go into Johannesburg, the plane is filled with Europeans. They're going to Africa. At this present time, yeah, the psychology that's being utilized is to make us ashamed and not want to connect connect back to mother africa so the europeans and the arabs who are over there buying up the land investing in the resources can make room for themselves on our home continent so at this present time as much as we feel yeah that um, Europe is a success and Europeans are doing Europe. They're not at this present time. A lot of other races at this present time are looking to make roots in Africa. Do your research and find out. Yeah, yeah but, um, in, in terms of religion, uh, yeah, Brother Leader, come in. Yeah, tonight, yeah. If If they were not magnated to African traditions, they would not have a Christian religion. They would not mm-hmm. have a, Ju- a Judaic religion. They would not have an Islamic religion. Mm. The, the point is that they suppress the fact that they've drawn the rudiments from African sources. That's right. And they are still in Africa, mm-hmm. not only stealing our land and our resources and, and, and controlling our market and market forces on the African continent mm-hmm. for, to serve their interests, but they're also studying our spiritual systems, studying it so they can, they can empower themselves and studying it also that they can keep us conquered and under their domination and That's control. Correct. So, so going forward, what? How can Africans, you know, assert themselves religiously, and how well, can we? We need to reclaim mm-hmm. our spiritual traditions, mm-hmm. and and as my son said earlier on, we need to reclaim it, and we need to reestablish it as a foundation of our nation building. Mm-hmm. In African tradition, the, the the same name of what we call our nation is what we call our spiritual systems. Mm-hmm. You have the Ga mm-hmm. spiritual system is a, is a nation. You have the Akan spiritual system. Akan is a nation. You have the Ewe spiritual system. It's a nation. So our national, uh, our nation building was grounded in our spiritual traditions. So it was fundamental. We need to, you know, here in the UK, we need to be- create and develop worship centers mm-hmm. based on, on our African spiritual traditions. That's what we need. Thanks. We need to be bold enough mm-hmm. and brave enough yeah. to right. do that. That's we need right. to be bold enough and brave enough In to black- go to the shrine, the African shrine, when our babies are born, go to the African shrine and bless our babies and name our babies. Mm-hmm. We need to restore the African cycle of life. But there's something here up from this book, Anthem yeah. of the Decades, I'd like to, to read, mm-hmm. if, if I may. Yeah. Yeah? Because I, I think it's, it's really, really powerful. Now, this is, you know, this is Zulu. This is Zulu philosophy, Zulu tradition. We've been conditioned to believe that the Zulu was something like a wild, half-naked people, yeah. you know, that... Um, was mindlessly Price attacking man. the British, uh, you know, going humba, 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 and sh- with, you know, with yeah. spear and sword and um, and shield, yeah. chasing on the British. I, I want to know what the British were doing there in the first place. <laughs> but this is just a piece of, of Zulu philosophy from the book Anthems of the Decade. And I'm still, it, this is in the introduction. And Roman numeral 22, page tw- tw- Roman numeral 22. And listen to this carefully. After creation, no, we have co- we have creation stories, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In African tradition, right mm-hmm. across the African, the, yeah. you know, the only creation story is not the the um, Jewish people saying there's no records. Story. The oldest records that yeah. we have is the Akashic records, which is a record of everything that's taken on this planet and in the universe. I just want to the Akashic, A K A S T I C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. After creation, man was endowed with two minds: the precision mind, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. which is Ubu Chopo. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And the cosmic mind, which is Inkondo. Uh, now, while the precision mind analyzes and uh, reorganizes the details of the material environment, the cosmic mind synthesizes fragments of information to create a universe, a universally significant body of knowledge. Now, listen to this. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. The precision mind, yeah? Mm -hmm. the, listen to it carefully. And uh, the precision mind, which analyzes and reorganizes the details of the material environment, and the cosmic mind, mm -hmm. which synthesizes. Isn't that the, co the right brain and left brain concept? that we come to learn about in European psychology. We had that, that in ancient Zulu philosophy. We had a concept of left brain and right brain. Left brain which compartmentalizes right brain that synthesizes. Imagine our Zulu ancestors who are portrayed as savages. Just think about it. Had this kind of deep thought in our tradition, let me just finish um, this piece. This piece of the, the, uh, the chapter, yeah. Man can live quite happily using the precision mind, but he can only attain knowledge through a balance functioning of the two aspects of reason. At the highest point of reasoning, significant units of information merge with universal concepts pulled together. By, by a unique form of intellectual uh, power known as Obuklanani. Uh, Obuklanani. Yeah? Those possessed of this power are known as the geniuses of society, which is the, which is the Izikla Na. Uh, this one is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, which is the the Iziklanafi, Iziklanafi, yeah? And if I've mispronounced it, um, may the ancestors forgive me. But I just want to, to emphasize to brothers and sisters that we had these concepts of high spiritual and intellectual attainment in our culture, in our philosophy, in our pure African thinking. And what has been done is that the Europeans and the Arabs have invaded, they have conquered, and they have done wanton damage to the minds and to the traditions and philosophy of our people. And we re it's when we reclaim this that we will become empowered again. www.voiceofafricaradio.com is 94 FM on your dial. You're locked into the biggest one. You're locked into the best. It's been straight talk. It's been hot. It's been sizzling. Um, we have to say big, big, big thanks to our panelists, Darren Henry, who's a journalist, to Her Royal Highness, um, let me get the name right, Na Chuchusuyo the first. Thank you so very much for coming. I want to say we all recognize her royalty. Absolutely. We don't have to be ga to recognize her royalty. <laughs> Absolutely. If that so-called Queen Elizabeth comes to Ghana, everybody's going to recognize Absolutely. her as the Queen of England. Absolutely. Yeah. So we thank do recognize you. Her Royal yeah. Highness Absolutely. the first. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'd have to say a big, 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 big thank you to Brother Lidon Bandanka of the al Kabalan Revivalist Movement for his presence. Okay. It has been sizzling. It's been great. We would be giving a list of the recommended literature so our cherished listeners could also read or buy uh, or go to the libraries for these publications to help them in their quest to understand African traditional religion, the practices and culture of the African people. It's been fantastic being on Straight Talk. I'd like to say a big, big, big thank you to production assistants, Nina Nadi, to Nanaya Siedu, to CEO Space Clotty, to Jenny Vanga, to our Straight Talk producer, Angela Hines. It's been fantastic having you on the phone lines as well, our cherished listeners. Uh, thanks for all your text messages as well. Definitely on the 24th of March, Straight Talk will be on. So do keep your dials locked onto the biggest one, into the best one. We promise it to be sizzling. We promise it to be hot. It has been Voice of Africa Radio, 94 FM. Keep your dials locked onto the big one.